Lights at the motel Under street lights In the city of bombs Call me what you want When you want if you want And you can call me names If you call me up Feel like the least of all your problems You can't reach me If you wanna stay up tonight Stay up at night I'm green lights In your body language Seems like you could use a little Company for me But if you got Hello, everybody, flooding out. How is everybody doing on this fantastic fucking Friday? How are y'all doing today, chat? For the sub match, for the sub rise, for the sub concert, for the sub gunner, the gunner live for the sub. What's up, gunner? Uh, for the 16 month sub, Dave for the sub, Herrick, Shaylin, and Beer for the sub, Hewitt for the four. So it's W200K Joe's. <gasps> Shadow for the sub. Yo, chat, little dub in the chat. We've reached 200K times that Joe has been sat in the chat. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate the, da- uh, the chat's dedication for saying the word Joe uh, or for saying the name Joe. Uh, I never thought we would make it to this moment. Uh, but we we have reached 200k Joes, and uh, you know it's really a monumental uh, accomplishment. Uh, one day we might reach a million. You never know. Anyways, chat. What are we doing on this fantastic fucking Friday? Everybody fucking lock in, and everybody tell me what we're doing. If you read the fucking title or not, somebody said now cry, bitch. I'm not gonna cry about that. It's a fucking React Day, chat. Dub for that. We haven't done a React Day in a bit. Scarcore for the thousand, but he says, how are your mods doing today? I don't know. I haven't asked my mods how they're doing today. Greatest for the sub. Strokes the Raider and YX for the sub. Grayson, username, Shadow, and Coster for the sub. Thank you for all the individual subs, everybody. Shanna and AGX for the sub. Corms for the sub. It's a fucking React Day, chat. Uh, we got a bunch of reactions that we're going to be going through today. Shanna, Zoke, and Johnny for the sub. Uh, before we go over the rundown of the reacts today, going to be doing a little PSA. Uh, I will be live early tomorrow. I will be live around 1231. Uh, I'm going to be doing a stream with my girlfriend, Brooke. Dub for that. Uh, it's going to be a shorter stream, probably like an hour, hour and a half. Uh, I, but I originally wasn't going to go live Saturday, so now I'm going to go live and do a little short stream with her. Um... We're going to do a little advice stream, right? It's just going to be kind of just chatting me and her sitting there answering y'all's uh, advice questions, life questions, etc. It should be fun. Uh, you guys have asked me to get her on for like a relationship advice stream. Uh, so maybe she will be able to help you guys with that. But uh, it should be like a little short, fun stream. I don't know how well it's going to do, but it doesn't really matter uh, just because I want to do it. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Now, today's reacts. Tomorrow, we're going to do a little short advice stream around 1 p.m. EST. And Sunday, I'll be live really early around noon because I have to go to my friend's grad party, but I still wanted to stream. Uh, so I'm going to be streaming early on Sunday. Outside of that, Monday will be uh, just a regular stream day. We're probably going to play this new Peppa Pig game, uh, which will be pretty funny. Then we're going to do some Fortnite, maybe Val. Uh, Tuesday, I won't be live. Wednesday, we're going to be doing uh, FNAF Security Breach. Now, chat, when we do FNAF, should we just do the DLC that's new, or should we play the entire game? Uh, because the DLC has much better ratings than the base game, but I've been told if you play the DLC, a lot of the shit in the DLC won't make sense unless you played the da- the base game. So I feel like I have to do both, but I don't really know. Uh, I'll let my chat decide, but we're not going to finish the DLC or the entire game in one stream either way. Uh, do we, or which, I'm just going to type which, DLC or entire game. Uh, cause we're going to do that Wednesday. Uh, we're going to start FNAF Security Breach. We'll probably do some scary reacts Wednesday too. Probably not FNAF the entire time, but we'll decide, uh, depending. Okay. Yeah. 90% are voting the entire game. Uh, FNAF Security Breach had okay ratings when it came out cause there was glitches in the base game, but apparently they fixed some of those. Uh, and the DLC is supposed to be really good, but the base game is supposed to be all right, but not as good. But we'll, we'll we'll do the entire game and then run the DLC after that, okay? Uh, all right. Thank you for answering that, chat. Crack over the sub. By the way, we are switching to our regular stream schedule. I'll say this like every day. The 29th of August. I'll be gone from the 20... I might stream the 25th, but I'll be gone for sure the 26th, 27th, 28th of August. I'll be back the 29th and we'll do our weekday schedule starting then. Meaning 
Uh, on the 29th, I'll start streaming at 4.30 EST on weekdays uh, and 2 p.m. still on weekends. But until then, it'll be 2 p.m. EST every day, but Tuesdays. Cracker for the sub, banana for the five. Jonathan Rome made a video about you dying a little while ago. I know. Uh, XX for the three. Uh, I miss uh, your streams a lot. I was wondering what you're doing. Uh, I was, oh, I'm always working when you're streaming. I finally have a day off where I can watch you. Dub. Johnny for the three. Uh, Shiggy for the sub. Jungle for the three. Shotgun one of the drinks in the fridge. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I would want to shotgun any of those. Uh, and I ate like three hours ago and I'm on an empty stomach. So if I shotgun like a high noon, I'd be, I'd be buzzing. Uh, AQ for the sub. Avoid for the sub. Dominator for the 340 bets. Saw the Savannah Bananas Wednesday in Trent, New Jersey. I don't even know what that is. Any advice for a high school freshman? Uh, don't procrastinate. Put yourself out there. Try and make friends. 52, Hobo, Nate, and Johnny for the sub. Zove for the sub. All right. Are y'all ready to see the rundown of the streams today, chat? First video. Oh, shit. Fuck. I didn't reset the subs. Fuck. I didn't reset the subs. Eljo Bart. Eljo Bart. Fuck. All right. Remember, we're at like 30-something subs. Or 20-something subs. I don't know what we're at. Uh, the Betty for the sub. I always forget to reset the subs. Anyways, uh, MS Pro for the sub, fast for the sub. First video of the day that we're going to be watching is Evil Dad Throws Newborn Baby in Trash Can. You won't believe it. Uh, tomorrow's teaching video. Uh, Death of an NPC, a Meat Canyon video. Why you shouldn't call 911 to scare your boyfriend, a cop video. Uh, the smartest theft in history, $109 million in 27 seconds. Uh, what a Wild West duel really looked like. A girl mistakenly ate 96 marijuana gummies. <laughs> But this is what happened to her brain. Uh, the strangest athlete in sports history. And a man with 1,500 words left to live struggles to keep his marriage alive. An Amaletto video. Uh, so we got a bunch of videos that we're reacting to today. A bunch of good ones. So let's lock in here. Chat for the first video. VK for the sub. E accidentally? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I watched the first minute of the video. Uh, and apparently it was a kid. Uh, and so that kind of explains it. But I also want to say, I mean, I'll say this when we get to the React video. Marijuana gummies don't taste like regular gummies. How the fuck do you accidentally eat a bunch of gummies and not think... Like, if you eat a marijuana gummy, it tastes bad. <laughs> like, they don't taste good. I've never... Like, it's gonna have... It's either gonna taste stale... Or have, like, a weird skunky taste. I feel like I wouldn't eat 96 of them. See about for the sub, Sam, for the three. Maybe if they're tiny ones, I don't know. Maybe they're, like, one milligram gummies or something. They're, like, gummy bears. Uh, me and my family went to Disneyland when I was five. I went to a store and had this huge pack of cars and begged for my dad. Uh, or begged my dad for it. He said, no, I made a tantrum on the floor. He dragged me out on the store by uh, the leg and beat it in the shit Holiday Inn. Beat it in the shitty Holiday Inn. What do you mean, beaded in the shitty Holiday Inn? Like he beat you? Hand me for the sub, BK for the sub. Why did you beg your dad? Well, I mean, number one, he shouldn't have beat you. But number two, why did you beg for a pack of cars? What do you mean a pack of cars? See about for the sub. Lethal for the five. Want to say, love your streams. I was wondering if you ever watched The Walking Dead. I have. Not the entire season, though. Stroke for the 5K biddies. What's the best thing to gift? Just to anybody? It depends on the person. Uh, you have to know the individual to know what's a gift to them. I mean, money always works for most people, but I would say in general, uh, the best gift is something that is personally crafted towards that person. Stroke, thank you for the 5K biddies, though. I appreciate the 5K bits. Let's lock in for the first video here, chat. Evil dad throws newborn baby in the trash can. You won't believe it. An off-brand Darman video. Riley for the three. Love your streams. I'm from moving from Montana to New York in a couple days. Any advice? I don't really have any advice because I've never lived in New York City. I've been there. People aren't very nice. <laughs> Depends who. Coming up on tomorrow's teachings. Because he's white doesn't mean I cheated on you. Ah! What? Oh, just because hey, the baby's white. Just because the baby's white doesn't mean I, I cheated on you. Oh. Uh, I have to talk later. I'm about to see my newborn for the first time. All right, thank you. You weren't there for the pregnancy? Already plot flaw. You're a father. You're a father and you weren't there for the pregnancy? 
You weren't there to watch, to witness your wife give birth. L father, what do you got going on that's more important than a fucking birth? Bye. Let me give a shit, dude. I could have the most important meeting of my life. If I had a fucking kid on the way, I'm leaving that shit. But also, I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to watch the kid slide out. I'm going to be holding her hand going. Whole time. Yeah, definitely not watching that. Oh, its head is coming out and it looks like a football. Because their skull's all fucking smushed. Perk for the sub, Sam for the sub, little Smokey for the three. That's three bucks out of the wild, but first time watching your stream on live. Dad, welcome to the stream. Nia for the 1,800 biddies. What's your opinion on people thinking you're dead on TikTok? It's cringy now. It's been like four months. Calla for the sub. It's d -tree for the sub. Thank you for the 1,800 biddies. Slap for the three. Uh, will we ever play Pikmin? I don't even know what that is. Riley for the three. All right. Hi. I oh. missed you. Oh. How for was the conference? Oh, forget that. Where's he at? And she's just perfectly fine. She just she just gave birth, and she's on her feet walking again. Are, am I wrong in saying when you give birth, don't you have to wear, like, super diapers? Because you're, like, bleeding, like, really badly. Because <laughs> you just popped a child out of your, uh, you know. Like, I feel like you're not going to be, like, Oh, well, let me wear skinny jeans. Like, I, I'd be in sweatpants and a fucking sweatshirt for the next three months. That Say looks like hi. Brooke. She does not look like Brooke. Her hair looks like Brooke's. That's it. Your son. In the corner with a fucking towel over his head. There's your son. Ah! Alice, this is not my son. What? This is not my son. What are you talking about? This is a white child. He's he's just pale. I Did mean, you? he very well could be pale. I mean, like, it's like it could just be a pale kid. You're like, like literally, bro. Being on me, aren't you? Why does his face look like that? Just because he's white doesn't mean I cheated on you. You had a baby with another man? I loved you. Yo, what? What is this jump cut? Is this supposed to be the guy? Or is this just a different story? Oh my god, stop trying to jam it into his mouth. What the fuck? Come on, you're useless! What the hell was that? Did that have anything to do with the fucking story? I mean, at least put him in the bottom of the bag. You know? Like, if you're gonna try and throw out a child, like, at least, you, like, you just put him on the top. You just put him on the top of the fucking bag. Like, at least, at least wedge him in there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> at least wedge him in the cracks, you know? We're a little busy right now. We can't find our baby. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm sure it'll turn up. Can I talk to Greg? It's very yeah, important. it's gonna turn up when the trash man opens the fucking thing and he's gonna see a dead infant. Okay. Hi, Carmen. You wanted to speak with me? Yes, follow me. Uh, we're a little busy right now. Uh, I know you're really not busy. Just follow me. Okay. You see my husband, Bob? He's brain dead. He's a vegetable. He can't do anything. He's oh. not brain dead. If he was brain dead, he would legitimately be dead. Okay. I have to feed him. 
Like, uh, if you're brain dead, aren't you always, like, like on, um, like, machinery to keep you alive? Like, you can't do anything if you're brain dead. Like, you're not going to be at home. And why is he in a shed? My God, she just keeps him in the fucking back, in the back shed. It's probably like 95 fucking degrees. He's paralyzed. That's not brain dead. Being paralyzed isn't brain dead. You're still, you're, you're still alive. Your brain is still working. Paralyzed means you, you, you can't move your body. He's still thinking. All, he can't please you. I'm a woman. I need affection and love. He can't do that for me. But you can. Whoa, wait. Are you out of your mind? I have a wife, Carmen. Hmm. Does your wife know about you throwing your newborn in the trash? What? That's right. I saw you. And so did my cameras outside. If you don't do what I ask, I'm going to tell your wife what you did and you'll be arrested. That's murder. You, you right, he's going to get arrested anyway. You can't just throw a kid in the trash and get away with it. Like, that's not... Like, that's not, like, that's legitimately murder. Like, that, he's getting away with murder. She's blackmailing him? I mean, yeah, but he's not gonna get away with it anyway. I'd be like, okay, I threw the kid in the fucking public trash can. In my neighbor's trash can. Say anything. I won't. You just have to be my lover now. You'll do anything I say. Fuck it up. Yo, what is this fucking story? Why is it so loud? I don't know. It just ranges in volume. I keep turning it up and down. You're not gonna scan the house first. We're just gonna walk in. Babe? Babe? Babe, is that you? What the fuck was that UFO sound? <laughs> what? Yo, dude, this is literally... How the fuck is this teaching anything? Oh, my God. Bro, he... I, I, number one, they just walked in. And they're already laying in bed like they just did it, right? Like, like this has been like an hour. And who the fuck is this guy? How could you cheat on me with our neighbor? You can't even explain yourself. I'm sorry. Well, he can. Is this because our baby's white? I wish I could tell you, but I can't. You monster. I hate you! Is this supposed to be an alien that's gonna make him unparalyzed? What the heck is happening? I don't know. You just slept with our neighbor. Did you cheat on me, Alice? Because this baby is not ours. Greg, I would never- What are you deflecting? Bro, you just had sex with your neighbor and threw the baby in the trash. You don't even know if that baby's not yours, bro. He was a little pale. He was a little pale, right? Like, bro, and, like, she's also kind of tan, right? The baby's kind of pale. Not a big deal, right? Like, I mean, that's, that's not definitive cheating. You fucking killed your son and then fucked your neighbor. Were you cheating on me? Were you cheating on me, Alice? Cheat on you. Just because he's white doesn't mean he's not ours. But it doesn't make any sense. We're both clearly Hispanic, and this baby's clearly- He could still be a pale Hispanic. He could just be pale. Some babies are pale. You don't have to be the exact, the exact replica of your parents. Occasion. Greg, please, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's just figure this out together. Bro, the kid's dead. He threw the kid in the trash can in, like, an Arizona summer. Get out of here. You're not helping our situation. Our baby's still missing. Oh, no. I'm so sorry to hear that. 
I hope he turns up soon. Hey, can I speak with Greg? It's very important. Oh, nobody's not going to be paralyzed anymore. Is he not in there? What is this, Carmen? What's happening? Who is this man? Greg, meet our visitor. Hello, Greg. What's, ha what's happening? This man has answers, Greg. He can help you understand. What? The truth will be revealed, Greg. Prepare to understand. John slept with Carmen and accidentally got her pregnant. But Carmen had to resort to alien technology to ensure John's memory of the event was erased. What? 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 Hold the fuck up. John slept with Carmen and accidentally got her pregnant. But Carmen had to resort to alien technology to ensure John's memory of the event was erased. I, I don't even understand that. Just, can somebody explain that to me? I don't even understand that. They said John slept with Carmen. He's Greg. Who's John? The guy that's paralyzed? Accidentally got her pregnant. Who is John? Is there a John in this fucking story? Bro, I feel like they're mixing motherfuckers' names up. John's the alien? I don't think the alien fucked Carmen. Carmen had to resort to alien technology to ensure- Who is Carmen? Is- Who is Carmen? That's the- That's not- Is that Carmen? Pregnant. But Carmen had to resort to alien technology to ensure John's memory of the event was erased. I remember now. So, Greg, now that you are- Bro, oh, Greg! Greg! Who is John? Who's John? Is John- Is John the guy that's paralyzed? That's the only person it could be. Unless he's John. Stand. We've made you remember it was my child. I put the seed into your life thinking it was her baby. Your baby's an alien. Our baby. Now, you have a choice to make. What do you want from me? I want you to be mine. To fulfill my needs that Bob no longer can. Please, Carmen, I can't betray Bob about to stand up. Bob's acting paralyzed right now. Bob about, Bob about to get up. It's like this. There must be another way. Okay. There is no other way. If you refuse, I'll expose your secret. You'll it's go. your kid, too! Why is she not upset about this? Pause! What the fuck? It's her child! Why is she not mad the kid is dying in the trash can out back? If you don't comply, I'll expose your secret. What, that your kid's also fucking dead? We'll learn about the affair you had with me. Think about the consequences. The life you'll lose. Fine, I'll do as you ask. Good boy. Oh, hell no. Now, you belong to me. You belong to us. Nah, Bob about to get up here. Why? Hold up. You? You're sleeping with my husband? Where'd she get the blicky from? Where'd she get the, where'd she get the Glock from? Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, this girl just got, where'd she get the gun? And you, I saw the footage. Yo, she holding that shit like a fucking idiot. Bro. No way that she holding the gun like that. And you, I saw the footage. I saw you throw my baby out. Is ah! she dead? Did she just get? Oh my God, John, about to get up. <laughs> <laughs> All along. All along. You thought I was paralyzed.
I saw you two have sex in front of me. I saw everything that happened all along. Little do you know that I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Our experiments are complete. What? What experiment? <laughs> 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 Yo, what? The aliens left Earth taking Greg with them as prisoner. The aliens left Earth taking Greg with them as prisoner. Prisoner and Carmen's lover. To agonize Greg, the aliens reigned terror on Earth. They built an AI robot army and took over the world. Oh my god, how realistic. Hey guys, it's Jason from Tomorrow's Teachings. We just dropped the Patreon. Click the link in the description. If you guys enjoyed that video, make sure to hit that like button, share with friends and family. I learned about fucking nothing from that. As a trash baby, this hit me really hard. I miss that trash can every day. As an alien dad of a trash baby, this hit me hard with the feels. As a dad who's thrown their baby in the trash, this was emotional. The nostalgic? Bro, no way. You're not just making videos. You're ending worlds. And then we got a genuine NPC comment here. What an awful father to throw his baby, his newborn, in a trash can. Even if he was cheated on, that's something somebody else's baby. That's still somebody else's baby. That is so wrong. I really do fear that one day towards the end of what happened, that could actually happen in our world. I really hope that doesn't happen. That did happen. We watched a video about uh, some woman that threw her kid in the trash. That was at a hospital. Uh, it wasn't some dad that got cheated on or some shit. Yeah, that already happened. That's probably happened like hundreds of times. Like people throwing their kids in the trash, which is fucked. But I mean, it's happened. Six for the thousand, but he says, hey, Joe, smoking for the sub, 80 for the three. Any tips on how to wake up your friends for breakfast? Uh, pour water on their face. Andre, Nachio, and Hex, and Jack for the sub, Hundu and for the five. Darman losing to these off-brand channels is entertaining as fuck. Bennett and Rare for the sub, Alex for the sub, 44. My mom just died of cancer. I'm sorry to hear that. Genuine rip in the chat. Like today or just recently? My mom just died of cancer. Really, uh, your videos have really helped me with my depression. I mean, I'm glad I could help, dude, but that's genuinely insane that you're going through that. Uh, I'm sorry you have to go through that, bro. Uh, that, that genuinely sucks. Manifest for the sub. Love Moon for the sub. Rusted for the three. Video makes me feel like a bad acid trip. Hewitt for the four. Would you ever do a sauce tier list? Uh, I don't know. Alex for the sub. Hyper for the three. When my sister gave birth, she didn't get out of uh, her bed very often for three or four weeks. Exactly. Forestly Jack for the sub. Callum for the thousand biddies. Alex for the three. Your videos helped me a lot with my depression. Wanted to give uh, a, a, uh, back a little good day. KMC for the sub. Little Smokey for the three. Uh, all right. We're caught up now. Uh, Hyper for the three. And Jabitty says, who let them teach? And Sai for the three. Do you think you'll do a late, another late night before school starts? Yeah, probably at least one more. All right. Another video. We got a Meat Canyon video. A little short one. And then uh, the cop video next. Uh, this is about... Uh, what's her name? Oh... She does the NPC shit on TikTok. What is her fucking name? Pinky Doll, right? This video is so fucking weird. Uh, thanks for the ice cream. Mmm, so good. Mmm, so good. Mmm, so good. Mmm, so good. Gang, 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 gang. Bro, I can't take those streams. Slurp. Dude, I love the ones. Yo, the one guy, there's, I don't know if y'all have seen this one. Everybody's seen Pinky Doll, right? Because she's the one that started the NPC trend on TikTok Live. Have y'all seen the uh, dude that acts like Miles Morales? And he'll stand, like, in Vegas. And fucking just in the middle of Vegas or some shit and do it. He probably makes such a bag. But if I was him, dude, I'd be worried somebody would pull up, right? Like, they see his live... And he's, like, just in the middle of fucking Vegas. Like, somebody just eggs him or some shit. Now, the Pinky Doll makes a fucking bag off this shit. I'm Joel for the sub to Chris for the sub. But who the fuck act... Like, okay, be real, chat. Have y'all ever sent a TikTok gift to an NPC TikTok streamer?
I know someone here has. Most people are saying no, though. The majority is saying no. I honestly think it's like eight-year-olds. I, I, it has to be. The people that are sending, like, like the fucking, um, dude, what are, like, the hats or the disco balls or, like, the fucking watermelon or the fucking whatever, corn on the cob, some shit like that. Bro, they have to be, like, six. And they're using their parents' credit card. Like, there's no way. You have to be 18? Bro. Oh, my God. You have to be 18. Have you ever heard of somebody just saying they're 18 on a fucking account before? Shocker. You don't have to fucking submit your ID to have a TikTok account. You can just lie. They're not all... You really think everybody that's ever donated on a TikTok live is 18 years old. You're crazy. I would say, I would say like 5% are above 18. I would say the majority of people that are donating on TikTok are like six. Mez for the three. Did you hear about the doctor decapitating a baby during labor? No. Brittany for the sub. When did that happen? Hammy for the three. Some teens started making fun of the Miles doing any broke character and was pressing them. It might be on YouTube. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, if they're making fun of them, dude, uh, like, like, okay, cool on them, dude. Yeah, the Miles Morales guy is making fucking three grand an hour doing, I'm the king of New York. I'm the king of New York. Oh, thanks for the hat, man. I'm the king of New York. I'd do the same fucking thing. If it, anybody would do that. If you're going to make three grand an hour doing that shit, yeah, no shit, somebody's going to do that. Ice cream, yum. Balloon pop. <coughs> gang, gang. Gang, gang. Son, I brought home Popeyes for dinner. No, 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 son! What did I tell you about watching this? She's so hot. Bryce Michael! Bryce Michael, are you okay? Gang, gang. No, 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 no. Oh, this woman is tearing this family apart! Oh. Bryce Michael, give daddy the phone. No. Bryce Michael, give give me the phone, please. No, I don't want to. Give Daddy the phone. No. Oh. <laughs> gang, gang. No lie, I watched the Miles Morales one for like 20 minutes one day. I just wanted to see if he would like break character, right? Like he's just sitting there. And they move back and forth. And do the same fucking thing for like five hours. I feel like I'd go crazy. Like, imagine having to sit there and just say, gang, 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 gang. Thanks for the corn. <laughs> for like five hours straight. You would lose your mind. Hand me for the three. Some, oh, wait, no, I already read that. These hands were grown from me. <laughs> from boy to man. Only to be tempted by beggars. <laughs> Con artist waiting to bite the hand that feeds. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Should I have guided you more? Surely I should have shown more enthusiasm in your Yo, interests. Yo, what interest. are the fucking paintings on the wall? What the fuck? Hold up. Okay, I just can't. Oh my son. My beautiful boy. Oh. I should have told you how valuable you are! To not be swayed by some succubus! By some creature! Hands out! Palms facing the sun willing to prey on your misguidance! Misguides, that was my fault. And I'm so sorry. I need more money, Dad. I'm sorry I let you down, Bryce Michael. Ice cream. I'm so sorry. Ice cream, yeah. Is this supposed to be resemblance of that one painting? Hold up. Yeah, Ivan the Terrible. Oh my god. Yo, see, that's why Meat Canyon's a fucking goat, dude. It's supposed to resemble Ivan the Terrible. 
because he killed his son and then like instantly regretted it or some shit. Wow. No way he intertwined Ivan the Terrible with fucking Pinky Doll. Whatever. Evil for the sub TV dude for the sub Lando for the three. It's me again. I don't know if you remember uh, me, but Aiden woke up. Dude, you just sent a dono two seconds ago. Uh, and Stroke. Bro. Stroke for the fucking 5K biddies again. Man. Thank you for the 5,000 bits, bro. Dub in the chat for that. Thank you for the fucking 5K biddies, dude. I appreciate that. My God. Fucking pop it out with the 5K biddies like it's fucking nothing. Said gang, gang. Appreciate the bits, bro. My God. Now, that was an actual good video. I'm surprised I recognized that reference when it panned out that he was Ivan the Terrible. A stroke for the 5,000 biddies, though. All right. Why you should have called 911 to scare her boyfriend. On March 19th, 2023, in Marshfield, Wisconsin, a distressing 911 call was received from a female urgently requesting an officer's assistance but refusing to provide further information. The call was accompanied by the sounds of a male shouting in the background. In response, officers were promptly dispatched to the location traced through the ping of the female's cell phone. Wow, so she called the cops and hung up? Oh, but she probably did it as a fucking, like, I'm gonna call the cops on you just to be a dick. Wow, and then hung up not expecting them to show up. Oh my god, she's probably gonna shit her pants when they knock on the door. How do they know what a Police department! Is? How do they know what apartment it is? Oh, because they can trace who she is. Police department, open the door. Police department, open the door. Hello? Hey, this is Officer Clash, the Marshfield Police Department, calling you. Okay. What's going on? Well, we got a call from this number stating, okay, well, what, uh, what apartment are you guys in? Well, we're trying to, we, we just want to make sure everything's okay. Oh, no, I was just calling because I was trying to piss off my boyfriend. Oh, no, it's not, no, it's okay. Oh, no, it's okay. I was just trying to scare my boyfriend because he was agitating me. 21 and X hit for the sub, like, bro. All right, so we just got to check our number one. Okay. It should be illegal. It is illegal. Calling a fake police uh, distress call is like fucking years in prison. Uh, it's Zalia for the sub. Well, how would you know we're knocking on the door? We're not leaving. Come to the door. Open the door. What's going on? I have to go to work. No, I have to go to work. I'm not willing to be late for work. Okay, what's going on? I have to. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. I have to go to work. I don't even know where you. Then why did you call the cops? You guys are here. Get away from me, please. You're making me feel I want the chief of police here. Okay. Whoever the supervisor is, I want here. Okay, he's coming. Okay, well, I, I have to go to work. I don't have time for this, sir. I have so, to go to work. So you called her. No, I didn't. I don't know who called you. Okay. I did what's, call what's you. Your, what's your phone number? Start with that. 60385. I'm so, from I'm from New Hampshire. Well, I'm from Massachusetts originally. Okay, so who's in the apartment with you? Me. Okay, who else? Me. Because there's someone else. I have to get ready, sir. Okay. I have to go to work. We got her? I have to go to work. Her? Yo, why is she tripping? Like, honestly, even if she called, like, for the, for, just to piss her boyfriend off, she could be like, it's okay, right? Like, it's not a big deal. I was worried. I'm not worried anymore. And then they'll go away, right? Because it's up to her, right? But, like, her walking out of the door and being like, I need to go, I, I need to go, get the fuck out of here. It's just like, okay, well, now they're going to want to search your fucking room. Now that now now you're acting like you got some sketch shit going on. Sammy for the three. You should look up the video where Miles Morales uh, NPC broke character. I'm not looking that up. I'm cold. Hello? Hi. Oh. Okay. So that's why, the number that called 911. I actually, have, I actually have two different numbers on That's the number that called 911. Oh, you're right. It was. They needed some help. Okay. You just said you didn't call the cops. Known for the fucking sub. So I that's why I'm here. Mean, I have to go to work, y'all. I have to go to work. I have to go to work. I have to go to work. I'm not talking to you. I'm not. Oh my God. Yo, they can't. 
dude, they can't just leave, right? Like, you have to, like, you have to, like, say, they're going to ask you, like, dude, even if they're going to ask you, like, four questions, they're going to ask you four fucking questions. Be late, right? Where, what, what are you skitzing about? My God. I think your work's going to understand, right? Like, you pull up fucking 10 minutes late to your, to fucking Walmart. They're not going to be like, oh, you're fired. You could be like, dude, there was literally, like, I had to fucking talk to the cops. Like, like, they're not going to be that pressed. Speaking to you, I have to go to work. Who else is inside? You realize you just repeatedly saying, I have to go to work 30,000 times is only prolonging how long they're going to speak to you? I have to go to work. You guys are going to cause me to lose my job. Please let me go to work. You called them. They showed up because you had a distress call. There's no one inside. Please let me go home. tripping bro oh my god acting like a fucking child somebody said joe in 20 years yo you think she's 41 she looks like 30 God, he fucking came out ready to swing. Holy shit. Yeah, try and fist fight a cop. See how that fucking goes. Oh my God. Yo, he literally came out bugging. The fuck is going on here? <laughs> oh, but you said there was nobody else there. Get the fuck away from her. Get the fuck away from her. Get the back the fuck up. They're not even, they're not even, like, remotely aggressive. Like, they're, they literally pulled up and said, uh, you, we got a call, we had a, you, we had a shop, what's going on? I have to go to work, please let me go to work! Please let me go to work! You're fucking skitzing. They're not even mean. Like, they're not mad, they're not fucking aggressive, they're not threatening to arrest you. Just have a conversation. Oh my God, they should tase her. That would be so funny. Oh my God, they should tase the boyfriend. Oh, they should tase the boyfriend. That'll be fucking hilarious. If they just immediately tase him the second he comes out. Get the fuck away from her. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Yeah! Oh my God. Yo. Yo, he ran out and lunged at them. Yo, they could have shot him. I have to go to work. That was stupid. That was really stupid for him to barge out of the door like that. Oh my god. Against four cops, dude? One of them could have shot you in the face. Sir! What the fuck are you doing? Oh my god, stop! Get the fuck away from her! Hey, hey, get, 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 get the fuck away from her! Get on the ground. Oh get on the ground. Get on the You just said no one was in there. Wow, this got so hectic so fast. There was literally no jump cuts. <laughs> like, at all. This was, like, two minutes. They pulled up, not even less than that. Because it was an intro initially. It was an intro initially. So it was fucking, it was like two, it was like a minute. And she's like, I need to go to work. He comes out, now they're all getting arrested. Damn, they almost tased him in the dick, too. That would have fucking hurt. Stop. Bro, you're acting like they're just gonna run up to your baby and shoot it in the face. Like, your, your kid's okay. Relax. It's an infant. It's probably sitting in a crib. <laughs> they're not gonna just go, bang, 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 and shoot the kid and walk out or some shit. Like, it, it's just an excuse to freak out. Relax. I didn't do anything. I thought you guys were hurting my wife. Yo, to be fair, I don't know if they should have tased him. If you want my honest take, 
I thought that shit was hilarious. They probably shouldn't have tased him. I. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, <laughs> bro. Because after after he saw that they were okay, he went like this, and then he put his arms down. They said, "Get on the ground." They gave him like half a second, and then just fucking tased him. Like, that was probably not not enough time for him to be like, okay, I'm going to get on the ground. <laughs> Alternatively, him lunging out of the door was prompt enough for them to tase him. Officer! Yo, whoever gave... Yo, anonymous, an, an anonymous gifter, thank you for the five gifted subs, whoever fucking gave that. Uh, I appreciate the subs. Uh, I don't know if you meant to hit the anonymous button, but thank you for the five gifteds. The biggest for the sub storm, for the sub muse, for the three. Uh, do Australian people poop? Yeah. Phoenix for the sub. Hewitt for the three. Thoughts on Wisconsin? Never been. Uh, also, my user has said height a miss. Oh. Uh, is a, is, oh, wait. Is a, is a, is a for the sub? Uh, PQ for the sub. It's Ethan known for the sub. All right. Stop I can't breathe! He just tased my boyfriend for no reason! You need to uh, not for no reason. He did. Okay. Okay, yeah, for no reason after he lunged out. But when he lunged out of the door, if they taste him right then and there, that wouldn't have been bad. Because he did threateningly lunge out of the door and looked like he was going to swing on them. He just said he's going to go No, I can't freeze it. No. You're going to go up? I can't. Up. Oh, but you're originally late for work. Let's go. Let's go. Outside. Wait, you said you're freezing so you can't go outside, but you were trying to go outside already. Oh, oh my God. Yo, imagine being their neighbors. I can't believe, right. I can't believe this. I gotta uh, adjust this cop too before. Okay. Okay. I'm wondering why she called the cops to begin with. Like, I want to hear, dude, three minutes in, and this already escalated faster than any video I've ever, I've ever seen. Hold on, hold on. I just tighten down when she was pulling on oh, my Why do you think she why do you think she called her uh the cops originally? They were probably having like an argument. If I had to take a guess. Yo, Brett, thank you for the five gifted. Thank Brett if you got a sub, thank you for the fucking five gifted. Brett underscore box ninety nine. She has a weird ass tattoo. I, I somebody said I think she's high. I don't think she's high, dude. If you're high, you're usually less aggressive. If you're drunk, you're usually more aggressive. Uh, anyways, why do y'all think she called the cops? She was high? I don't think she was high, bro. I, you don't just call the cops when you're high. Oh, high is in coke. No, I think they probably had an argument. And then she called them on her boyfriend. But then was like, fuck that. And then hung up. No, you are, you are fuck not. you! Fuck you! Arguing, then the police got involved. I didn't even know. What did you do anything? Brandon's your first name, right? Yes, Brandon, sir. all we had to do was talk about that, right? Okay. That's all we wanted to do when we came here. I'm can we sorry. sit? Can we sit you up? I think they feel bad. I think I feel bad for Brandon. Okay, yo, justice for Brandon, bro. I feel bad for Brandon. He got tased. I think he wrongfully got tased <laughs> because my boy. Yo, he shouldn't have lunged out like that, and they should have tased him there. But, like, they gave him, like, a second to get on his knees and then tase that motherfucker. Um, I don't think he'll be in trouble. I think she'll be in trouble. Tase her out of my leg, yeah. please. We, we want to sit you up, though, so you're not laying on it, okay? Guys, I didn't do anything wrong. But You but, came out tense up at us, man. You can't be doing that. Yeah, well. see, no, they were allowed to do. They were allowed to tase him because he lunged. I didn't leave my apartment. Home. I did not what the leave. fuck is this weird mesh thing on on the fucking side right here? My apartment. You, did, but you can't come out trying to fight us. He just lost his job. Alright. He just lost his job. I can't afford to lose my job. Please let me. Please. Please. Guys. No way, dude. Even if they let you go right now, you think you'd be able to just go to work? Chat, if this happened to you and you were like, please, and they were just like, okay, go to work. You're not going to go to work and be in a right headspace to fucking be a retail worker or some shit. Like, you're not going to be, like, taking names and doing calls and all this shit. I'm going to be like, bro, my boyfriend just got tased. I'm fucking skitzing. They had me in cuffs. Like, bro, you're going to need time to process this. Carbon and known for the sub sky cloud for the three. Got a tongue piercing three days ago. Uh, today I'm in work and I realize now I have a lisp. 
Uh, but that's probably temporarily because you have to get used to it. Please. Please. I'm going to lose my job. You have a seat in here. I'm going to lose my job. Please don't. Please, I'm not going to run. Why would you guys handcuff me? I wasn't running. Okay, they don't handcuff you because they think you're going to run. I mean, they'll do... They'll do that sometimes, but like the, 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 they don't only handcuff people because they think they're gonna run. They handcuff you if you're arrested. You called nine one one. Just listen, all right? All right. You I was... called nine one one because he was because he was being a douchebag. I was just trying to threaten him with the fucking cops. Okay, that's inappropriate. That was it. So you called the cops? He, my boyfriend was being a douchebag, so I called nine one one. That's a toxic fucking relationship. Number one. <laughs> if you're at, number one, y'all shouldn't be together. Uh, if you're at the point where you're literally threatening your significant other to call the police on them for having an argument. Um, number two, uh, yeah, you just called a false police report. Uh, so south for the sub. First of all, right? I understand that. They have a baby? So, dude? You can raise a kid with divorced parents. My parents have been divorced since I was two. One in three families in the United States are divorced. You, you ain't got to be together. <laughs> Dead ass. Like, you ain't got to be together to raise a kid. Sorry. Had to say it. I mean, if y'all ain't meant to get be together, y'all ain't meant to be together. Like, dude, so many couples, well, like, I know, I know there's a lot of families that forcefully stay together for their kids. But if anything, it usually just makes it worse. I mean, it depends on the situation, so I can't definitively say for everybody. But I mean, like, if you're making yourself stay with your significant other because you have a child, you could still be mutual acquaintances and raise a kid separately. Jay Luna for the sub, so self for the sub. At the end of the day, parents don't need to be together to be good parents. They just need to be there for the son or the daughter, right? That's it. To be a good father or a good mother, you have to be there for the kid. You don't have to be with your, you don't have to be married. Right, that's just a side thing, right? Yeah, but okay. I wasn't. He wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing anything. Okay, you, you got every police officer over here because we thought someone was being. Y'all have two parents. I mean, I was raised by one, but I mean, I still got two. Everybody's got two. A murdered, beat up, yeah. and no, I'm fine. You guys did all of and this. He up. thought that you were hurting me. Of course, he came out here to help me. He thought you guys were hurting me. Okay, you called nine one one. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like, yo, they would have never tased him if you didn't call the cops on him. Yeah. He wasn't doing anything! Okay. No, she can go on the car. No, please. Right. I have to Put your little... legs inside. Sir, I have Put to... Put your legs inside I'm the vehicle. trying to talk to you like a normal Put person. Put your legs inside the vehicle. Please talk to no. me. No. Put your legs inside the vehicle right now. Can you please talk to me? No. Put your legs Can you inside. put the window down? We can roll the window down. Can I please be in the... No, I want to know what's happening. Right. Guys, please. I have... I have to work. They're not going to arrest Brandon. Brandon's fine. They're going to, they're probably going to release Brandon. They tased him because they thought he was a threat. He wasn't, right? I have, I'm under arrest? Right, yeah. Yep. You're Why? under arrest. For a you called a false police report. An officer first of I'm all. under, I'm going to jail? No, you're not going to jail. You're under arrest right now. I, I have to work at noon, guys. I can't afford to lose my job. I'm sorry, you shouldn't have. Bro, she said she was going to be late at work. It is 10.53. You were acting like you want to be work in five minutes. A one-hour drive? Maybe. But, like, br yeah, maybe it, because she looks like she lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. So it might be an hour drive to work. But still, Dan for the sub, Chunky for the 20. For the $20 donor, Chunky Monks, thank you for the $20 donor. I want to support my boy. I know it's a lot, a lot, not a lot, but I just wanted to support. Dude, you gave me 20 bucks. It's a fucking lot. I appreciate that. You don't have to give anything, by the way, if you don't want to. Uh, donations are optional. I appreciate any dono, dude. Thank you, Chunky Monks, for the 20. I called 911 and. I didn't do anything, sir. Yes, you did. So I'm going right. to lose the work at noon. Please. Put your leg in. Put your leg in. How, why is she still held on to the fact that she has to go to work? Put your, leg in. Put your leg in. Or you will go to jail. Please. Put your leg in the car. No, you're going. Bro, like now you're resisting arrest. Now you're going to get a crime. Now you're going to get a charge for that. Right? Because you're just screeching at a cop like you're a fucking chipmunk. 
Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. She'll yell at them. She'll get really mad, get really sad, try and be reasonable, and then get really mad, really sad, try and be reasonable, right? It's like a loop. Dan, for the sub, somebody said, oh my god, just taser. Please, put your leg in the car. Please put the window down a little bit. Put your leg in the car. Why put the window down? What the fuck is with the window? Why do we need the window down, bro? They got AC in a fucking car. You're acting like the fucking Ford Explorer that's $65,000 doesn't have fucking AC. It has AC, bro. It's just a little bit. That was weird. How are you doing, Officer Bird? I'm okay. Nice I'm gonna, to see you I'm gonna take care of you here, buddy. I uh, I hope there's not gonna be anything stupid from this. Nobody's nobody's hurt. I don't feel like I don't. I'm not gonna make paperwork out of it. So. Oh God, I feel bad that I'm. Should I feel bad that I'm watching this? I mean, dude, it has fucking five million views, but it's like public shit. I feel bad for Brandon. I don't feel bad for the woman, right? I feel bad for Brandon, right? Like, I feel like he, sh he should have, bro, she called the cops on him because he was being an asshole. Like, yeah, he was being a dick. And then all the, and then he got tased because of it. Somebody said, boring Joe. Bro, your name is literally NPC1. We'll see you never, bro. Oh, he said, fuck y'all to my chat. Oh, God, NPC1 hates my chat, apparently. Well, that sucks, dude. See you later, man. Chunky Mugs for another 20. Dude, you didn't need to give me another $20. No, no, thank you for the 20, bro. You, uh, oh, my God, I don't know how to say your name. I forget. Height for the four. My aunt got arrested after she argued with a cop during a wedding. Dan for the sub. How bad was the argument? Thank you for the 20, dude. If you need needle nose, I have needle nose in the cabinet. I'll put the window down a little bit. Stop Can yelling. Talk to me. I need to know what's going on, please. You, you're being arrested for one disorderly conduct, two resisting an officer. I wasn't resisting, three, sir. That, yes, you were. You said no, no, and just started going. That is resisting an officer. Sir, I have to go to work at noon. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Nobody gives a fuck about your stupid ass fucking work right now. And three, for obstructing an officer by filing a false police report, which caused us. Hey, was Yo, homie stuttered there. He was trying to fucking remember what the laws were. He said, all right, what was the last one? Uh, let me get this right. I called the police because he was yelling. Okay. You, you told me that you just made that up. No, I told you he was the, yelling. That he was being I a douche, babe. Yeah, Sir, that, I can't afford to lose my job. I'm sorry about that. So do I have to go down to the station? You're going to come down to the station right now, yeah. Can, please get There's absolutely me. zero chance she makes it to her work. Like, absolutely zero chance. When Kai got detained, wasn't he in jail for, like, 12 hours or more? Like, you're there for a while. One brazen for the sub, move it for the, uh, for the fucking sub. Uh, or for the three. Can we get a lobster chain in the chat? What is a lobster chain? All right. Be back now. I'm trying to be back before work, please. No. So is she going to be held? All she cares about was work. She don't care about the kid. Well, she cares about work because her boyfriend lost his job. And if she loses her job, that's also devastating. So I understand her freaking about out about work. But, like, her freaking out about work is only going to further make it less likely that she gets to work. All right, yeah, let's not do lobster spam here. All right, we're going to put in Nemo only in like five seconds. Chunky for the 1733, just a tad more, bro. You don't need to keep giving more. I appreciate the fucking donos, though. Chunky Monks for the fucking 17, dude. I appreciate that. What a fucking dub. You just screamed in my face. I'm sorry. I have a baby I have to take care of. Where's your baby right now? In there. In there? Yes, sir. I have to go to work. Okay. Please, I have to go to work, please. So who's going to watch the baby? I want, I'll call out, I'll call out. I just have to be with my baby. Please don't take him away from me. All right, well, we're not going to take your baby, but we got to find somebody for him right now. We have to go through what just happened. Why can't Brandon take care of the kid? Right here, and Sir? we're going to go do that at the police department. Okay, well, can we go now? I have to work. Do you want to call him and just let him know you're going to be late? I can't. I'm the one that opens. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not... <laughs> Wait, what the fuck did she say? We're going to go do that at the police department. Okay, well, can we go now? I have to work. Do you want to call him and just let him know you're going to be late? I can't. I'm the one that opens. Well, 
Oh, I'm sorry, but that's what opens at noon. What business opens at noon? A restaurant? A bar? Boris for the sub. Optional for the sub. A bar, maybe. A 7-Eleven? Dude, they're open 24-7. It's not <laughs> going to happen right at this exact moment. So. Okay, well, yeah, can I please call them? I have everything. Wait, why are 7-Elevens called 7-Eleven? Are 7-Elevens open 11 hours a day? Seven days a week? No. Why are they called 7-Eleven? No, they're 24-7. Well, then why are they called 7-Eleven? 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. That would make sense. Why are... I've been to a 7-Eleven at 2 a.m. now. Why are 7-Elevens called 7-Eleven? In 1946, the, chain, the, the chain's name was changed from Totem to 7-Eleven to reflect the company's new extended hours, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days per week. But now they're open 24-7. So it just doesn't make fuck. That's just fucking stupid. Boris for the sub. In my phone! Okay. Well, we'll have to go get that in a second here. Sir, what's going on? I don't know. I'm out here talking to you. Do you think I know? Yeah, your decisions got you here. My decision? I didn't do anything besides try getting her to calm down and cook her breakfast this morning. I didn't do anything besides cook bacon and sausages for us. What part of cooking has you stepping through a door with your fist raised at police? We have to work through what happened to make sure... Okay, that's true. ...that nothing else Okay, happened. fair point. ...happened, all right? Oh and God. we're not going to rush this because you're on a time schedule. Sir, please! Nothing happened! He was yelling and I called the cops and that is it! Okay, you were screaming that, that, you guys just look that for anybody, we need to any get there. To arrest me. I don't get it. I don't even know who you are. Bro, but you would get arrested. You would get arrested even without the other shit. You would still either get fined or get arrested for filing a false police report. If you're convicted of fourth degree false reporting, you can face up to 18 months in prison. Cocks up for the sub, tenicos for the thread. I love driving to somebody, uh, to someone to a police station as a cop, just hearing them scream in the back. <laughs> Hype for the four. If you could go back, would you ever change your major or career path? Probably not. Chunky for the 25, why not a little more, bro? Stop donoing. Thank you for the 25, Chunky Monks. I appreciate the 25, bro. What a fucking dub there. Thank you for the bro uh thank you for the donut, bro. I appreciate that. Meow for the sub. Uh if I could go back and change my major or career path, I would probably start out with philosophy. Uh, but I started out with exercise science. The reason I switched was because I started doing social media. Um and I didn't want to become a physical therapist anymore, but I didn't know that at the time. And I also do like the classes that I took uh my freshman year. Uh so I'm not upset about it. Uh, I mean, I'm going into my senior year now for philosophy, but uh, no, nah, I probably wouldn't change it. Uh, it's crush for the sub. Uh, dude, the the path in life that you take makes you you. Lil Sully, thank you for the five gifteds. Appreciate the subs. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the five gifteds, Lil Sully2228. Uh, anyways, the path in life you take makes you you, right? And like a lot of people always type, talk about like hypotheticals of like, would you change this or change that? If you did, you wouldn't be the same person, right? Good or bad things. If you change something that you did negatively that you're not proud of, or you change something that you did positively, or you just change something that you had to go through that was boring that you could have prevented, like, even if you, yeah, you could, like, change a day that you had to do yard work, and now you don't have to do yard work that day. But even that one day of doing yard work changes you as an individual, right? So going back and changing something specifically would make you an entirely different person. Picky for the sub, especially if it's years back. Like if you're like, oh, I would go back to like six years ago and I would change this. Like that's going to make you an entirely different person. Picky for the sub. Uh, Chasey up for the sub. Right. All right. Lock back in. And I'm not telling you. Okay. Well, then that's another reason we're not going to let you go then. <laughs> she said that her boyfriend was being a douchebag and that she wanted him to get scared 
Yep. That's basically what he said. Obstructing disorderly conduct and resisting, in my opinion. Yeah. So when she started screaming like she's being right now. <laughs> she's still screaming, bro. He came to the door like we were hurting. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. we were hurting. Yeah. Her. Just up, ready to go. Does he need to go to jail over this? He's. Uh... <laughs> bro, see, they don't want to arrest him. I don't think they should arrest Brandon. Uh, there's a baby in the room in there? Yep. In the, in the, uh, okay, so, so if he's rational and capable, yeah. let's leave him there okay. based on the circumstances. Okay. Are you going to stay calm? Yes, I will. I promise. Okay. I need, like you, I need you to stay calm and cooperative at this point, all right? I'm going to have Officer Fox unhandcuff you so you can tend to your baby. Okay. See, that's a dub that they're doing that. Okay. okay. What is your name? What? I'm not yet. Please, I have to go to work. Okay. Oh my God, dude. It's been 10 minutes straight of you just saying you have to go to work. What is your name? I have to go to work. I'm asking you what your name is. Why? So I can address you. Why? I don't know, because you're sitting in the back of a fucking police car. Anonymous for the five gifted. Thank you for the five gifted. Whoever sent those, appreciate the subs. Third for the five. Have you noticed that you have 5K viewers? Yeah. Thank you for the sub. W view count today. Thank you for everybody that's tuning in. Appreciate the fucking... Um, Support. I'm wondering how many people are going to show up tomorrow for the Brooke advice stream. Because it'll be a short one. It'll just be just chatting. I still think it'll be fun, even if not that many people pop out. But it'll be a dud. Uh, and then the early Sunday stream. But Sunday, everybody's off. So it doesn't really matter that I'm going live early. All right. Angel for the six. Shakira. Okay, is I'll that in for the sub. Shakira. You can call me Shakira. Shakira what? You can call me Shakira. Well, what's your fucking name? Shakira Flabbergasted. Okay. Yeah, your last name's Flabbergasted. You're Flabbergasted. Okay. That is have... not her fucking name. Shakira Flabbergasted. Any mental illnesses that I need to be concerned oh, about? Just the fucking police station. Uh, call my yeah, take a sip of that coffee. Hold up. Sitting. Yeah, take a sip of that coffee. Yeah, hold up. Why don't, why, don't you, why don't you prop up a good old YouTube video on the iPhone and sip that coffee before you pull out to the police station? Yeah. Why don't you take some time on that one? Not, not at this time. Yeah, no, take another sip. I think you're parched. I think you're going to need another sip there. Make sure to go like 10 under the speed limit, too. Uh, yo, hype for the five gifted. Thank you for the fucking hype, mouse. Uh, or thank you for the gifted hype, mouse. I appreciate the subs. Tell it goes for the three. I taste whatever dumbass gave me that whack ass name. Kennedy and Micro for the sub. Uh, Oblivion for the sub. Thank you for the five gifted. Oh, please. Please. Can I please call my work? Not at this time. I told Why? you that. Because you're under arrest. Sir, can you call them for me? All you have to do is go and call her work for you? Yeah, she got arrested. She's not going to be in today. I don't have your phone with you. And I, and I wasn't lying earlier. I have two different numbers on one phone. I have, a, I have an e-SIM card and a regular SIM card. I was not lying to you guys. No, but you said you didn't call. I'm going to lose my job. I don't know what to tell you. Sir, please just... Somebody just said I love viewing Joe's stream whilst I shit. Your actions are way inappropriate, and your neighbors don't have to put up with this. Sir, I just want to make sure I don't lose my job. I don't know what to tell you. I will call them. Why would you tase him? He wasn't doing anything wrong. You guys are so fucking trigger happy. It's ridiculous. Bitch, if they were trigger happy, they would have fucking shot him with a real gun. Uh, they tased him because he lunged out of the door. Now, they should have tased him earlier rather than giving him time, and then they shouldn't have tased him when they did. They should have just let him fucking put his hands up. But if they were trigger happy, they would have legitimately shot him. Uh, all cops deserve to get shot. All cops deserve to get shot. Yeah, that's that's a nice one. Okay. Fucking tease my fucking husband. Even though they're literally doing their job and you filed a false police report. Yeah, a lot of cops are shitty dickheads. That's a fact, right? But like these guys showed up because you called them worried for your life. Vaguely, right? They showed up doing their job to come save you. You, in turn, yell at them, tell them they should be shot, and then tell them to go fuck themselves. Like, what? Chunky Monks for the 1767. That makes 100. How to make it even. Thank you for the fucking $100 donut. Cumulatively, Chunky Monks, I appreciate that. Mew up for the sub and Elizabeth for the sub. Ten goes for the three. Uh, and, bro, Chunky Monks, genuinely, thank you for that. What the fuck kind of shit is that? There's fucking six of you. You guys gonna bum rush them, you fucking loser. 
Yeah, or he could have a knife and stabbed somebody. Bring me to the hospital. Oh my god, I would love this. I would love this. I would love this. This would be my favorite part about being a cop if I was a cop. It'd be my favorite part. The ride. The ride. The ride to the station where I sit dead silent. Where I say absolutely nothing. Or, or, I don't know if this is allowed. I don't know if this is against, like, conduct. I repeat everything they say bat they say in in a condescending voice, right? Take me to the hospital. Take me to the hospital. <laughs> and so no matter what they say, you just repeat what they say back to them. Oh my god, that would drive them crazy. They'd start biting the fucking fence. Or not the fence, the fucking grates. Oh my god. For what? Bring me to the hospital. For what? Bring me to the hospital. I want to kill myself and I feel like I want to kill myself. Bring me to the Somebody hospital. said she sounds like R2D2. Okay. Duly noted. Bring me to the hospital! So she's trying to pull the good old, uh, what is it, 4140 hold or some shit? Where you uh, say you're going to kill yourself so they have to take you to a hospital instead? That's worse. I'd rather go to prison, man, because they're not going to let you out. If you if you get a cop to submit you to the hospital for like a 4140 hold, you're going to be in the hospital for like three days and you're going to pay for it. Yeah, 48 hour hold. Yeah. Bring me to the hospital. Or 5150 hold. I didn't know. I didn't know what it was called. I remembered it was some so two numbers, something one, something hold. I got some side. It's fifty-one fifty. That's what I meant, not forty-one. Myself, I'd like to talk to an officer. Okay. What would you like to talk about? I would like to go to the hospital. I'm feeling. Now. We're not gonna take you to the hospital because you're gonna go to jail. So. Really? Yep. Wait, what is he doing then? We're still working. Also, yeah, like, what is this? What is this play here? This is a, this is a risky play, trying to act suicidal so she goes to the hospital. When they could con just conversely handcuff you and put you in prison. Like, if you're in jail in handcuffs, hooked up to a radiator, you're, you're not going to be able to kill yourself, right? So, like, I, I think it's equally like, okay, yeah, we'll just keep you handcuffed. Instead of actually just putting you in the, in the, in the prison cell, like, unhandcuffed. Sleepy for the sub. Uh, height for the three. Uh, it says, height is my username. That works fine. Gumbo for the 25. You should add me on Discord. No. I want to ask a question serious. Uh, you can ask the question here, uh, but I will not add you. That's parasocial. Um, I appreciate the $25 dono, uh, but I will not act, add you on Discord. You could ask one of my mods the questions to relay to me, uh, or you could dono it, and I won't read it out loud, uh, and I will just answer it. Uh, sleepy for the sub. Uh, Staddy for the sub, Kim, and Sleepy for the sub. Uh, but no, I will not add you. What's their user I can whisper them? Gumbo Game YouTube. Or Gumbo Game YT. Uh, ask Manifest the question, and he will relay it to me. Uh, and then I will give him an answer, which will then be relayed back to you. Uh, magic for the thousand biddies. Sat for ten minutes thinking about what uh, to say. Here's some biddies. Uh, thank you for the thousand biddies, bro. And thank you for the $25 dono, uh, Gumbo Game. No, but just for future reference, too, if you have a question, just ask it on stream. Uh, I will not have a private conversation with you. Uh, that's parasocial, right? Maybe like two and a half years ago when I started out on social media, it would have been different. But now how I am in the social media realm, uh, no. I do not feed into parasocial relationships. Uh, so, no. Uh, magic for the thousand biddies. All right. Let's lock back in here, chat. Uh, type locked in. Somebody said valid. I feel that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm just not going to have, like, I, I don't even know what he wants to ask me, but I'm not going to have a, a fucking conversation with him because then it's going to be like, oh, don't remove me, please. No. Just ask Manifest the question. I'll answer it. Manifest, let me know when um, he asks it. Um, bro, what the fuck? Ain't RLLY parasocial, but I'd forgets and shiggles. What is gits and shiggles, number one? And thank you for the $56 dono. I'm not, dude, I'm not trying to be a dick. Like, I know it's probably just a regular question, but it's just a principle, right? Even if you're not going to be parasocial, someone else would be. So it's just a broad thing. I'm not going to have a private conversation with you. Thank you for the fucking $56 dono combo game, though. Appreciate the fucking sub. 
or not the sub, the fifth, the fucking fifty-six dollar dono. What does parasocial mean? Um, when somebody acts weird like they know me when I don't, you guys know me, I don't know any of you, right? So having a conversation is immediately weird, right? That's the basis of the example that I could give. Uh, but it's also just like when people act like they're the the broad thing is like when people are parasocial and they act like you're friends with them, even though I don't know you, right? Uh, or a better example is like when somebody's in love with a K-pop artist, even though the K-pop artist will never meet them in their entire life, right? Something like that. Uh, combo for the 10 says, uh, yeah, I got you. Just ask Manifest and I'll, 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 I'll answer. L Jung for the three. Uh, I appreciate this up. And thank you for the fucking $56 dono, dude. You didn't need to give me that much fucking money. That's fucking crazy. Uh, and the reason I also thought I was parasocial is because you wanted to ask it privately. Um... So that's why. Um, but thank you for the fucking dono, dude. Manifest, did you get the question? All right. Lock back in here. Working through that, but Wait, why am I His whispers are off. I'm still waiting. You got to turn your whispers on, dude. Going to jail. I told you that already. Can I just get bailed out? No. Wait, Is it parasocial to say you're my favorite streamer? No. It would be parasocial if you said that you loved me. Or not loved me in in the sense of my content, but it would be parasocial if you were like, yeah, Joe, like I, I, I Joe's my friend. I want to be I want to be friends with Joe so bad. I I want to date Joe so bad. I'm in love with Joe. That'd be weird, right? That'd be parasocial. I'm going to jail for yeah. real. Wait, why? I'm going to sleep in a prison. Like, so why am I getting arrested for disorderly conduct, obstructing an officer? Maxwell for the sub. Gumbo for the 15, dumbass, uh, dumbass hell can't whisper to manifest my B. Bro, uh, Mega for the sub, just ask the question on stream. Why, what is the question to where it needs to be privately asked to manifest and then relayed to me? Just ask the question. Uh, like, I don't know what it is, but thank you for the 15, dude. You don't have to keep giving donos. You could just type in chat, too. Um... Somebody said someone's going to kill themselves. What do you mean? You also made your account 11 minutes ago. So uh, you you made your account specifically for coming into my chat. So I'm wondering what this question will be. Max and Mega for the sub. Uh, but just ask Manifest. Can you arrest him? Huh? Uh, we may arrest him too, yeah. But so what about my baby? We'll take care of the baby. Oh my god, you're going to take my baby? I'm not going to take your baby. Is CPS coming to get my baby? Brandon's taking care of the baby. Fucking relax. Did I say that? No, I did not say that. What about Miranda rights? I always wonder that. Do you think he read her her Miranda rights? No. Okay. Why can't I just get bailed out? Because in... in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please, sir. Please. No, please. I'll be 1095. Sir, CPD, please. Beginning of 74990. 74990. Oh, I don't God. have a name for you What's right now. What's going on with my baby? Is he getting arrested? Uh, sir, why am I your, getting... your baby getting arrested? Yeah, the infant's getting arrested. Uh, I think they're going to handcuff him. Because you created a giant disturbance here. I didn't do anything. I didn't know that I was resisting. I was just trying to see if he was okay, sir. Please don't do this. I will swear to God, I will. I will stop from here on out, guys. Please. I. I please. No part of your actions have sir, caused me to believe I'm you. I'm trying to talk to you like a normal person right now, sir. Please. Okay. Please. You have not identified yourself yet either. My birthday is ten. My social security number is. Please, sir, Why is she just me? listing her fucking social security number or him? Mace for the three. This lady's so dumb. Please, I think she's just freaking out. I don't think she's stupid. I guess I'm already arrested. Look you are arrested, yes. I only called because I was trying to scare him into not yelling at me anymore. I was wrong. That was wrong. I was wrong. That was illegal. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't know why I'm the one getting arrested. Because of your behaviors after it. Sir, no. please don't arrest me. You are arrested right okay, now. Okay, well, please don't let me stay over the night. I promise my actions will change. Right. I'm not seeing a significant change in your behavior, I'm, but... Okay, I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'm sorry. Just take a couple of breaths. We'll please. talk. Hey, just please. take it. No, I don't... You're, you're not listening. Take a couple of breaths, and we'll talk when we're at the PD. Just breathe please. for a couple of minutes. That's all I'm asking you to do. Oh my okay, god, out of the car. bro. We're gonna go she said you'd take a couple breaths. She's still fucking freaking out. area, and you're going to have a seat. All right. <laughs> Officer, I really nope. don't want to. 
I worked at Hooters. I wor We're not watching this video today. We'll watch that one Sunday. Stroke for the thousand, but easier. A uh, little cutie for tootie. Thank you. That was a W video, though. Um, I'll give you the subs over the three. You missed my last bit dono. Uh, Mace for the uh, for the fucking biddies. What was your last bit dono? Uh, and Gumbo, let me know if you could fucking figure out how to whisper manifest. Uh, uh Rip Brutus, and would you play GTA Five story mode? No. Uh, my dad died in early June. I'm only 13. I'm sorry to hear that your dad passed. Um, Sea Skull for the three. What's your favorite football club? Uh, I used to watch uh, Man United a lot, uh, but I have not watched uh, football as frequently. Uh, but I would still say that's like the team I would support on the Premier League. Brown Z for the five. Are you ever going to do a tier list on chips? I don't know. Stroke for the five. How's your day been? Good. All right, chat. I got to piss real quick before we watch the next video. Count me down 30 seconds. Hold up. Actually, I got to fucking cue a song so it's not just dead silent. All right. Count me down. Sleepy for the sub, nor for the sub. Um. All right. Next video. Sleepy for the two gifted. Yo, did Gumbo figure out the question? Now I know what the fucking question is. Gumbo. Just whisper manifest. Oh, he said working on it? Oh, my gosh. What do you mean working on it? All right. The smartest theft in history, 109 million in 27 seconds. Uh, we got this, and then we got, yeah, like five more videos. We got a bunch of videos left. Patience rat. All right. Lock in, chat. When committing a robbery, every split second counts. Thieves can be incredibly sophisticated and sometimes pull off million dollar robberies within the blink of an eye. Taking a whistle stop tour of famous heists around the globe, here are some of the fastest thefts in history. Dubai. Our first stop is in Dubai, in a brazen heist that took them only 170 seconds. What you'll find with most robberies on the list is that the fastest high-profile thefts involve jewelry. To rob a bank, there are various barriers and security measures put in place to stop someone from accessing their cash. With jewelry stores, you simply need to go into the store, smash the glass... Yeah, I feel like that would be the best place to rob. Like, what's the best thing to rob? Probably a jewelry store. I mean, it's you're, you're probably going to get caught, but... Robbing a jewelry store is better than a bank for sure because the security is way less. I mean, a, a jewelry store sells a lot of security. There's probably cameras and alarm systems and all this other shit set, and it'd be kind of hard for you to, like, sell the jewelry, but you would be able to get way more money way quicker than fucking robbing a bank because a bank, they got a vault. They got locks. They got fucking security. Uh, LJ Don for the sub. Uh, chill for the sub. Tentacos for the three. Uh, 15 minutes ago, I was on a toilet, full body, sweat, uh, toes curled, and cold towel in my head. Your stream got me through it. Uh, I'm glad I could help. Monkey for the sub, the 709 for the three. I always enjoy watching the content when I'm down. Thank you. Take the expensive jewels inside and run for the hills. In 2007, shoppers at Wafi Mall in Dubai witnessed something from a Hollywood movie, and the chain of events could only be fully understood when looking back on the CCTV cameras. One car drives through the glass windows of the mall, while another vehicle follows. The cars move inside this mall towards a jewelry store. One car stops, and a man with a gun comes out and checks the surroundings. The other car then barges into the door of a Graf jewelry store. Carrying a gun and a hammer, the man smashes all of the glass casings and and helps himself to some highly expensive jewelry. He takes $3.4 million worth of jewels and then speeds. No 
way a fucking mall jewelry store got 3.4 mil of shit. Oh, it's in Dubai. All right, I take that back. I was going to say, like, if you're walking to, like, a K Jewelers in a fucking regular American mall, if you stole all the jewelry there, how much is that worth? Like, 300K? I mean, it's still a lot, but, like, damn. Bro, it looks like you stole, like, six things. What, did you steal solid gold? Off, the gang had come and gone within the space of 170 seconds. It was revealed later that the cars they used were stolen too. The gun he was carrying turned out to be fake and was used as a way to scare people off and make sure nobody tried to make themselves a hero. The thieves drove down Zaabil Road where they burned down the two brand new Audi cars they had just stolen in order to destroy any evidence. This heist, along with others on this list, is believed to be perpetrated by a gang of jewelry thieves known as the Pink Panthers, named after the Pink Panther comedy and crime movie series. While they are incredibly effective jewelry thieves, they are much more bloody and ruthless than those portrayed in the movies. Let's just say, there's nothing to be laughed at when these guys are at work. When they orchestrated their heist in Dubai, the thieves tried to flee the country. Alright, Fiddle pinned it. Alright, he basically just wanted to tell you that not everything chat tells you is always true about information in the videos. He wanted you to be informed about that and to double check sometimes when chat says stuff. About what specifically? Why didn't he just say that himself? I really don't know. Send me the message he sent on Discord manifest. I feel like you're reading it wrong. He wanted to privately DM me about misinformation my chat gives me in videos. What videos specifically? I mean, yeah, like my chat's going to be wrong, just like I'm wrong a lot of the time. But, I mean, that's just very... Wait, did Manifest message me? Hold up. There's no way. All right, whatever. Let's get back into the video right now. Hold up. All right, lock in chat. Luckily, Dubai police captured two suspects before they could make their way across the border, as well as the two stolen Audis. The group had rented a more modest Nissan Sunny for their getaway, and the Emirati police found the jewelry in this car. It was until 2014 that a third suspect was found. He was arrested by the Spanish authorities and then handed over to the UAE in 2015. And to rub further salt in their wounds, their heist car is now on display at the Dubai Police Museum to reflect <laughs> the police's ingenious work in cracking the case. But wow. despite the speedy cars, raids and getaways, this is the slowest theft on our list. Here's where things get a bit faster. London. Our next heist I mean, are there like, are there like actual bank heists recently where people got away with it? Or like jewelry heists? Like genuinely like 5 million plus stolen where they weren't found? Probably not. I feel like back in the day, it was probably easier to steal shit. But now, probably not. Just because there's security cameras, there's tracings on everything. Chunky for the five. Do you get more money from gifted subs or donations? Donations. Uh, but subs are kind of the community, too. Takes us to merry old England and, funnily enough, to another Graf Diamond store on New Bond Street. At 4.40pm, two men dressed in suits walked in, posing as customers. While they did not wear any masks, this is not actually what they look like. Before the robbery, they told makeup artists that they were making a music video and needed their- Wait, hold up. Manifest sent me the conversation. He is given- it just see it just seen that he has given wrongful info about law enforcement and shit. Wanted to inform him on things that he had questions on. Oh, he wanted to answer my questions about incorrect stuff. That's why he wanted to message me. I hate seeing people tell him stuff that's a hundred percent incorrect and he believes it.
I mean, like, yeah, my chat's wrong. Some why are people spamming hi YouTube? Why are people spamming hi YouTube? Anyways, uh, I mean, like, yeah, my chat gives me misinformation sometimes. Um, I can't really definitively say what's right or wrong in that misinformation. What was specifically wrong about law enforcement? I'm assuming in other YouTube videos. Not specifically today, because I didn't really talk about much today. All right. Well, you just said with law enforcement. All right. Well, I mean, dude, thank you for the fucking, like, donos that you sent. I, I, I mean, if there's anything specific you want to point out that my chat, like, gave misinformation on, I'm, I'm glad to fucking, like, correct it. Just let me know. The big for the three, or let manifest now. Swoosh for the subs, Avi for the sub. Their appearance completely altered. The makeup artists recalled that one told the other, my own mother wouldn't recognize me now. To which the other replied, that's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? Once inside, they pulled out handguns and ordered the staff to get down on the floor. Then they forced the shop assistant, Petra Einar, to open the display cabinets. It took them two minutes to collect $65 million worth of jewelry. Oh These are my god, dude. That's obs- 65 mil? Where do you go to sell that, though? Like, if you got the plan to steal it, you also gotta got a plan to, like, get rid of it so you actually have money. Some of the 43 jewels taken. And then not seem sketch when you just suddenly inherit $20 million. Alright, stop spamming hi, YouTube chat. I'm literally gonna fucking cut this whole part out of the fucking YouTube video if motherfuckers keep spamming it. I'm banning the people that are spamming. Like, genuinely banning. You're not getting unbanned either. All are for the sub. M. Novak for the 1500 bitties. How do you feel about Eric Cartman poker face? I mean, that was like a trend that was in my chat like months ago. I don't really talk about that song that much anymore. The big for the three. Uh, Chucky for the sub. The haul included diamond earrings, necklaces, and rings with a total value of around 40 million pounds. Wow. However, the thieves cannot simply sell these pieces as they are. Experts think they're so recognizable that they would have to be broken up, which would dramatically reduce their value. The gunmen were well aware that police could be waiting for them even at this early stage. I so mean, do I really give a fuck, though? I gotta break up the diamonds and shit? Yo, I'm just gonna steal all the gold and smelt that bitch. And then just go to cash for gold places and sell it. They brought out Petra Erna as a hostage while they waited for their getaway driver to arrive. Interesting. like 30k a month doing it. Just slowly sell your gold. They also fired a gunshot to clear the street. In Britain, police do not all carry guns, and only a particular section of them are allowed to use firearms. If an ordinary police officer- Bro, not all police officers in Britain carry guns. So was walking around, they would simply not be allowed to respond, and instead, he or she would have to wait for the specialist gun force to arrive. This sequence of events points towards an incredibly capable set of criminals. However, Your police their versus armed police? Wow. Methods of transport getting to and from the scene of the crime suggests otherwise. According to Good Morning America, the heist was so brazen, police say the men arrived at the store in a London taxi and made an incredible getaway, changing cars three times over a distance, measuring less than half a mile. That's they crashed once. Handed a bag of jewels shit. to an accomplice on a motorcycle and gave police the slip. Despite being right in the center of London, they traveled from getaway car to getaway car, and this helped keep the police off their scent. However, the fact that they were constantly moving from one vehicle to the other led to one of them losing their phone in one of the cars. This was a crucial mistake and led to them being caught by the old bill. Two men appeared in court. Why do you got your fucking phone on you? You're robbing a bank? I'm gonna leave that shit at home. They charged with carrying out Britain's biggest ever jewelry robbery. They're accused of conspiring to rob graph jewelers on We're like a no name flip phone. With like a number I'd call. I'm not bringing my fucking iPhone. Bond Street. A third man has been charged in connection with the incident. However, none of the jewelry has been recovered from this heist, and it's unlikely that the criminals will ever divulge this information. Tacoma. Our next heist takes us to Tacoma, Washington, in what was one of the fastest bank robberies of all time. At one point, the criminal I'm about to discuss was an American hero. Luke Elliott Summer served time in the U.S. Army, but in a strange twist of fate, he ended up using his military training to hold up a bank. Summer grew up in British Columbia, Canada, but holds dual citizenship with Canada and the U.S. He joined the U.S. Army when he was just 17. Oh, I feel like it'd be so easy to rob a, rob a Canadian jewelry store. Oh my god, dude. 
I feel like, I, like you know, it's me basing my knowledge off of the, the Canadian stereotype that everybody's nice. But I feel like if I strolled into a Canadian jewelry store and just was like, give me all the jewelry, they'd be like, okay. In 2003, the very year that America led its invasion of Iraq. A year later, Summer spent time in Baghdad, and in 2004... Well, does, do a lot of people have guns there? Like, in, in Canada, are citizens allowed to carry guns? Because I feel like that's what determines whether or not it's bad to rob that place, right? Like, if I was going to rob a jewelry store in any U.S. state, it would not be, like, Texas or, like, Georgia or somewhere where I know that, like, some random dude named Bob on the street has a fucking Glock 19 stuffed in his pants that he's going to pull out and fucking dome me with. Five, he spent time in Afghanistan. When ret uh, to things for the 3,500 videos, not to be parasocial, but your videos and streams have got me through a lot and nothing else has helped and put me a smile on my face when I'm down. Dude. That's not parasocial. And thank you for the 3,500 biddies. It's crushed for the three. Where did you get that giant pickle, Rick? Dave and Busters. M. Novak for the sub, oblivious for the sub. Returning to America, he recruited people to join his training camp. On August 7th, 2006, four men charged into a Tacoma branch of Bank of America carrying weapons. It was organized to every last detail. Two of the men were holding handguns and were responsible for getting hold of the money. The other two carried AK-47S and were guarding the bank from outside. They all wore body armor too and carried plenty of ammunition with them. Wow. Summer was one of the men with a handgun leading the charge. A prosecutor of the case said, if the police arrived, Luke Summer planned to go to war. The robbers were armed for combat. Summer Summer continued shouting orders at the tellers to hand over the money, while one of the men guarding the entrance shouted out how much time had elapsed. Summer Is it the money traceable, though? Like, that's what I don't get. If you rob a bank, what do you do then? ordered the tellers to give them $1.20, $1.50, and $1.100 bills, and told them not to give any money with serial numbers or die packs that would be traceable. His assistant collected the money, and when it hit the two-minute mark, the team's timekeeper shouted, Let's go! And they fled the scene. They exited the bank with $54,011. Not worth it. Not worth it. Four people, 50, 50 Gs. Bro, go on Wipeout and win. Go on fucking Wheel of Fortune. Fuck. 50 grand split by four? That's fucking ass. That is so shit. That's not, e that's not life. Even if that's one person, that is not life-changing money at all. 54 grand? Even if you invest that, bro, you still got to work a nine to five for the next 30 years. Like, like, dude, what the fuck? I thought they were going to walk out with like fucking 500K, a mil, $54,000. And don't forget the $11 at the end there. Dollars, taking them two minutes and 21 seconds. The gang used military precision in this robbery, but it was one fatal flaw that led them to being caught in three days' time. When they took off in their getaway vehicle, a bystander took down their license plate number and handed it over to the police. The bandits forgot to get rid of this license plate, and this was traced back to the car of one of the gunmen. While the thieves I've spoken about earlier remained extremely tight-lipped when caught by the police, this guy was a lot more cooperative. He spilled the beans on everything that happened, leaving Summer and the rest of the team in hot water too. The bystander who foiled this plan may have prevented more than just one robbery. According to CTV News, Summer, then 20 years old, planned to use the proceeds of the robbery to start a criminal gang in BC that would rival the Hell's Angels. Summer was sent- You're gonna- you're gonna rival the Hell's Angels with a 12 grand fucking start? You're gonna rival the Hell's Angels with a 12 grand seed money. 12 G's. You think that's enough? Empty for the sub. Yo, you need reputation and power, not fucking 12 grand. If I had 12, like I could, by that logic, any of us, if we had $12,000, could just start a rival gang. It would fail. Runeski for the three. Well, I mean, he also had military training and all this other shit. Tomorrow's stream going to be good. Do you know what stuff you're going to talk about yet? No, it'll just be whatever chat wants advice for. Empty for the sub couch for the five. Me and my boyfriend have been watching you since we got uh, together two years ago. We love your content. Got us through some tough times. Dub. Gumbo Gaming. Thank you for the... Or Gumbo Game YouTube. Thank you for the tier one sub, bro. I appreciate the sub and the donuts that you gave. Uh, and thank you for letting me know that uh, some of the shit that my chat has told me is incorrect. But uh, point it out in the future when it happens. And you could just type in chat, too. You don't have to fucking dono every time you talk. Uh, just to do it for the sub t dings For the 5,000 biddies. Says it's pronounced tie dings Thank you for the fucking 5K biddies, dude. And Chucky for the 1569. In all seriousness, seriousness, you're probably my favorite streamer. 
Uh, I appreciate the fucking dono, dude. Dancing for the sub. It's crushed for the three. Uh, and dude, tidings. Thank you for the 5,000 pennies, bro. Oblivious for the sub. Sentenced to prison, but it is still not the end of this story. In 2008, he tried to hire a hitman to kill the attorney who got him convicted and wow. specifically requested to make it look like murder, not an accident. Thankfully, the hitman he hired was an FBI informant, which slapped another 20 years onto his sentence for good measure. Hong Kong. Our next robbery takes us across to the- How do you find a hitman? Like I, 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 it was it was an FBI agent too. Number one, how do you tell if they're they're an FBI agent or not? Number two, how do you find a hitman? How do you how do you find someone to murder some the dark web? Yeah, and at that point, I'm gonna be like, yeah, this dude's a cop. Telegram. Somebody said Facebook Marketplace. Need someone to murder someone for me. Five dollars. Serena for the two gifteds. Far east in Hong Kong, where three million dollars worth of jewelry was taken in 90 seconds. In the popular Tsim Sha Tsui shopping district, a high-end store named VIP Watch and Jewelry was the unfortunate target of ruthless thieves. In July 2018, three masked men confidently charged inside at 10.45 a.m. The glass was smashed and many luxury watches were taken and placed into a bag. They took 34 Swiss-made luxury watches and wow. 39 American-made bracelets, with a total estimated value of 23.5 million Hong Kong dollars, which is equivalent to three million US dollars. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. See, now that's now that's a shitload of money. No guns were seen at the scene of the crime. The culprits were simply armed with a knife and a retractable baton. Sadly, a male employee was injured badly by the baton and had to be taken to hospital after the robbery. He was speaking on his mobile phone when the robbers came in and may have said something to alert the other person on the phone that he was in danger. A source told the South China Morning Post it appeared the employee was beaten because the gang thought he tried to make a phone call. Customers and other staff were threatened with a knife, but whether the police were tipped off or not, this might not have made much of a difference. The thieves came and went in the space of 90 seconds. As quick as a flash, the robbers fled the scene onto the nearby Lock Road, where their getaway vehicle awaited. Superintendent Wong Chi said, From our preliminary investigations- Yo, don't they have cameras everywhere in Hong Kong, though? Like, I, I read shit that they, they have, like, f I mean, I don't know when this was, but they have, like, facial recognition and shit, right? Like, they can know- like, wouldn't they know where you are at all times? Like, if you get in a getaway vehicle, they're just going to see your car. Like, they're just going to track your car. Like, because there's cameras fucking everywhere. Uh, K-Dog for the three. What the fuck? Uh, why does it actually sound like me? How the fuck do we... That'd be awesome. Okay, yeah, you're just typing my TikTok. This getaway car is believed to have been stolen in UN Long District in March. The fact that this car was stolen months before the heist tells you just how much planning and preparation went into this one and a half minute job. Another vehicle was also found on fire and is believed to be linked to the case. The police believe that the bandits handed over the jewelry to someone else while switching getaway cars and afterward they made their way into mainland China. Two of the men are believed to be Chinese and could speak fluent Cantonese. The other robber was of South Asian descent. Arrests were made weeks after after the heist. All three men were believed to be caught by police, and a girlfriend of one of the men also turned herself in for her involvement too. All right, I don't want them to get away, but like, I want to hear a story where it's like, and to this day, 30 years later, no one knows where they are. Like, we never hear that shit. It's always like a week later they were caught. A week later they got arrested. All of them. Like, I want to hear like, and... 35 years later, ain't nobody got a fucking clue. Serena for the three. However, the stolen- You're an amazing person. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Goods have not been recovered. Paris. Our next robbery happened in Paris, the city of love. The Pink Panthers are very active in this city, and some even allege that they were involved in the high-profile robbery of Kim Kardashian. Instead of robbing a jewelry store, sometimes it is easier to simply mug an individual carrying expensive belongings. In 2014, thieves decided to put this to the test and rob a Saudi prince. On a quiet Sunday evening at around 5 p.m., Prince Abdul Aziz bin Fahd left the Four Seasons George V, one of the most expensive hotels in all of Paris. A premier room at this place will cost you nearly $2,000 
$2,200 a night. Wow. When he checked out, the Saudi prince was on his way to take his private plane at Le Bourget Airport, but would be interrupted along the way. As a royal family member, he did not travel alone and traveled in a convoy alongside security guards and aides. The lead car was a Mercedes van, which had some of his aides inside. However, this level of security did not seem to be enough. Eight masked gunmen driving BMWs swooped in and hijacked the Mercedes van. Without firing any shots, they made off with a briefcase. This Saudi prince had a briefcase stuffed with 250,000 euros in cash, which is about $335,000. Why? 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 I understand your rich as shit. Why do you have a briefcase full of fucking 300 grand? Is that your just, that's just your walk-in money to buy food? Bro, you got it. You ever heard of a credit card? A credit card or some shit? Bro, he got a fucking, fucking 300 Gs in cash on him at all times. That's crazy. That's like, what are you, when are you ever using that? As well as cash. My walking money is like $35. Like genuinely like, tw like a 20, a 10, and a 5. He also took luxury watches and secret documents. Denis Fauriat, a spokesman for the prosecutor's office in Paris, told news outlets the assailants blocked the car with two vehicles and asked the occupiers to get out of the car. Then they took the car and drove away. It took them a few dozen seconds to do that. So although there is no exact timestamp on this heist, the thieves did manage to snatch over $300K in the space of seconds. There are many suspicious aspects of this crime. Firstly, how did they know that the Saudi prince was carrying a suitcase full of cash? And secondly, how did they manage to yeah, know Yeah, what if the they grab the suitcase and it's just full of, like, underwear or some shit? Like, oh man, we got the fucking suitcase. They open it up and it's just like a switch. It's just a fucking Nintendo. Like a Nintendo fucking Game Boy. The exact route that he would be taking from his hotel to the airport. Foriat said it was led by criminals <laughs> who- Somebody said full of poo. Oh, it's just a case of shit. That would be, that would be the most flabbergasting thing ever. Imagine you plan to rob the Saudi prince. You get the suitcase, or you get the case, you go home, and you're, like, sitting all with your friends. You crack that bitch open, and it's just poop. <laughs> just, like, straight, just, like, like filled to the brim. Just packed with shit. Just, the mo I, I, would, I would be so, I wouldn't even be mad. I would be, like, genuinely confused. Like, why does the Saudi prince have shit in his suitcase? seemed to know that there was money to steal and eventually knew in which car they would find it. When we hear that somebody has been robbed of their possession, our first instinct is to feel sympathetic toward them. However, the French public were not exactly shedding tears for this Saudi prince who found himself short of $250,000. The prince had I mean, just- I honestly think he probably didn't give a fuck. I mean, aren't, aren't like Saudi princes worth like billions of dollars? Like if you steal like 300K from him off the street, he's probably like mildly annoyed. That would be like if you mugged somebody from, like, a 20. Like, if you just took a $20 bill from somebody. It'd be like, yeah, you're mad. But you're not, like, you're not going to go out of your way to fucking figure it out. Finished a two-month vacation in Paris and was known for leading a lush and lavish lifestyle. An article in Le Monde contained comments such as, The prince lost his day's pocket change. And another person wrote, Three little minutes of production from their oil wells tax included. Nonetheless, the French authorities took this incredibly seriously, and a year later, nine men were arrested in connection with the heist. The convicts may have been linked with they the pink- They found them? Oh my god! I feel like that was the most likely one to where they'd get away. You just steal 300 grand of a suitcase? Panthers, and the fact that the theft was done so quickly and professionally certainly points to this. New Jersey. In New Jersey- We have not only one of the fastest robberies ever committed, but one of the biggest teams involved too. Virani Jewelers, a jewelry store in New Jersey, found itself suddenly swarmed by a total of eight gunmen. One of the thieves appears to point a gun at a man near the entrance, while another took out a hammer and starts smashing the glass. The robbery happened at 7.45 p.m., which was minutes before the store was about to close. The thinking behind this may have been that there would be very few customers in the store at this point, and the workers may have also been caught off guard having spent the whole day at work. However, this happened in June 2022, so it was still broad daylight oh my at God, that time. This was a year ago?
hour in just one minute a year and three months it eight of the thieves run in smash the glass and stash jewelry in their bags it's clear that these people knew what they were doing and did not hang around for long they took what's believed to be one million dollars worth of jewelry this wow. is little india it is known as a major jewelry market people come here from well beyond new jersey but tonight Many in this neighborhood are shaken as police hunt that group of suspects. Little India specializes in Indian jewelry and is a popular shopping district for the South Asian community in not just New Jersey, but most of the East Coast. According to Fox News, the region attracts South Asian customers from Maine to Maryland. There are at least 10 to 15 other jewelry stores in the area, so it's a mystery why they chose this store and not the others. Local woman, Miss Bar Chaudhry, witnessed the crime and said how comfortable and confident they were. They came in like they owned the store. They're like, all right, everybody down, breaking stuff, filling up their bags, walking away like they had no worries in the world. Thankfully, the only damage caused was to the property at the store. No serious injuries reported, Brittany. Some of those business owners tell me tonight they plan to get together and meet with the mayor come Thursday, Brittany, to talk about safety. This robbery happened over a Stop year. Stop saying her name. Uh, Brittany, they're planning on uh, getting together, Brittany, and uh, they're going to meet with the mayor, Brittany, tomorrow to talk about what happened, Brittany. Serious injuries reported. Brittany, some of those business owners tell me tonight they plan to get together and meet with the mayor come Thursday, Brittany, to talk about safety. This robbery happened Brittany. over a year ago, and there have been no further updates on who the culprits are and where the $1 million of jewelry has gone they to. They got away? They got away? It's been a year. Oh, my God, dude. That mean, It's been a year and three months. There's no way they're going to catch them, dude. It's been a while. A year and three months, they, they didn't get them. Wow. Wow, dude. What do you think they did with the gold? They probably smelted it. Probably burned it down to a block. Two, it is not understood which gang or operation they were involved with, but this seemed like a very professional job. Tokyo. The next robbery occurred in the city of Tokyo, a place which was at one stage home to the Comtesse de Vendôme, which is one of the most expensive necklaces in the world. The jewelry piece is composed Joe did of that shit. I did not rob the jewelry store. Uh, tidings, bro. Tidings for another 5K biddies. Brittany. Brittany. Thank you for the 5K biddies, bro. I appreciate that shit. Worldly for the sub goes for the three. They sort of beef with the Saudi prince. They're lucky the cops found them first, honestly. Oh, yeah, probably. Jumbo for the 30. Friend dared me to dono. Bro, you didn't need a dono more. Thank you for the fucking 30. Friend dared me to dono. From Gumbo Game YT and Tidings for the 5K biddies. Project for the sub Tycho for the sub Cliff for the 5. Uh, Joe's like Batman. Brandy and Maddie for the sub K Dog for the 3. Uh, Serena for the sub, or for the 2 subs, and Aiden for the 5. Who's your favorite rapper? I don't really have one. Serena for the 3. Uh, I already read the other one. And dude, thank you for tidings for the 5k biddies and gumbo for the 30. 116 diamonds, including a centerpiece, 125 carat diamond, and is believed to be worth $31 million. But since 2004, nobody knows where this thing is. On March 5th, 2004, the Tokyo jewelry boutique, Le Supra Diamant Couture de Maki, had some unexpected visitors. According to police reports, the robbery involved two men and two women. The men were expected to carry out the heist while the women were on the lookout. Dorda Rasevich visited the boutique many times and posed as an eager customer. He was even shown the Comtesse de Vendôme by one of the staff who believed that they could have their biggest ever sale coming soon at the store. Rasevich returned another day at 11.46 a.m., except this time he was accompanied by his friend, Alexander Radulovich. Radulovich had a pen and paper and looked to be writing something down, but he suddenly immobilized the clerk with pepper spray. Meanwhile, Rasevich broke the glass containing the Comtesse de Vendôme and snatched it for himself. Then both men ran out of the store and fled on motorcycles. The whole thing lasted less than 40 seconds. All four of them stayed at a hotel in Tokyo for a night before fleeing the country under fake Croatian and Czech passports. The next day, they boarded a plane for Paris. Okay, I'm gonna guess they got caught seeing that he's panning out how they got away. And were thousands of miles away from the scene of the crime. The Japanese put all of their resources into finding the culprits to the extent that they had 100 investigators working on it. Two years later, two Serbian men were jailed in connection with the robbery. However, they refused to let the police know where the necklace is hidden or who they were. Working for, Rasevich even testified that it was an inside job and it was used to collect $100,000 worth of insurance money, something the authorities have refused to believe. One of the most surprising aspects an of the- An inside job? Oh, they were trying to say that the jewelry store owner got them to rob it from them so they could get 100 Gs. Bro, 
Hidings for the $50 hype chat. What the fuck? Dude, stop dodoing that much. You're giving so much money right now, bro. Thank you for the 50, dude. I appreciate the fucking $50 hype chat. And thank you for the $1 hype chat, bro. Salt for the sub, gel for the five. Can you do a poll on what continent we are from? Uh, yeah, we could. I would, I would venture that most people are from North America and then Europe. Uh, which continent are you from? North America, South America, uh, Oceania. I'm probably spelling that wrong. Europe, Asia. Uh, I can't do Africa and, well, I mean, uh, uh, God. Okay, well, okay, I'm going to do North America and South America lumped together. And then I could do, and then I can wedge Africa. Uh, North America, South America, Africa, Oceania, Europe, Asia. And then we can't do Antarctica, but I don't think that really fucking matters. Oh, it's already somebody already did a poll. Wait, North America, South America, Asia, Europe, Africa. That's five. We're, we're missing. We're missing. Aus my mods. My mods are missing. Let me make the poll, mods. They missed Australia and o or Oceania. Europe, Asia. They just left out fucking Australia and everything. All right. Serena for the thousand biddies. Thank you for the fucking thousand biddies. Uh, SL for the... Bro, the boy... Yo, what is with the fucking donos today? This is the most donos I've, I've gotten in fucking months. What the fuck? TBT. Been a while since I donated a big load. More to come. Okay, that sounded weird. The boy talks in for the thousand... Or not, not the thousand... The boy talks in for the fucking hundred dollar dono. What the fuck? Thank you for the hundred dollar dono, the boy talks in. Dub in the chat for that. I appreciate the fucking dono, dude. You didn't need to give that, but yeah, you've given a lot of money in the fucking past on this stream, dude. I appreciate the fucking hundred. Salt shaker for the sub, Joel Allo for the five. Uh, and tidings, thank you for the five K biddies again. Yeah, most of my chats from North America, South America. 22% are from Europe. No way 22% of my audience right now is from Europe. Oceania, 2%. Africa, 4%. Asia, 3%. Yeah, I would say most of my audience, I would say country-wise in terms of, like, who's from where, United States, Canada, then probably the UK, uh, Australia, maybe the Philippines for the people that are saying Asia. I would guess the Philippines because there's a lot of people that speak English in the Philippines. Uh, for the people that are from Europe, what country are you from? Sweden, Italy, Germany, UK, Hungary. Wow, yo, W, W European viewers. I mean, W everybody that's not from the uh, fucking the US, dude. I didn't know I had that many viewers uh, outside of the US. I appreciate the support. Crime is one of the women involved since the I'll probably drop in my European viewers when I go back to my 4.30 weekday schedule, but we'll see. Right. I mean, I don't know for sure, but we'll probably see when people, um, cause right now it's 2 PM my, or 4 PM. I start at two, but it's 4 PM my time. I know a lot of you guys are probably watching late at night, but if I start at 4 30 at night, then you guys are going to be watching it like fucking what? 10 30 your time starting. The boy talks it for the 50 fucking gifted. Thank them if you got a sub, bro. Thank you for the 50 gifted. The boy talks it. Oh, you're fucking crazy, dude. Oh my god. Thank you for the 50 gifted. Holy shit. I don't even know how many subs we're at today, and that's wrong. We're at like 200 today. Dude, thank you for the 50 gifted. And the hundred dollar dono. What a fucking dub for that guy. Oh my god. Or that girl. Or that non-binary dude. You never know. Even though it says that boy toxin, you know, it could just be a username. Thank you for the 50 though. Appreciate the fucking 50 gift is the boy toxin. You're a fucking beast. So many subs to the chat. So many donors to the chat. I appreciate the support, bro. My God. Heist, Dorothy Fasola has You're been crazy, living man. in Scotland and working as a fish trader. In Aberdeen, she was known as a fiat driving seafood exporter who drove a hard bargain. Oh, On hell no. Don't tell.
the boy toxin for the fucking hundred gifted subs cumulatively this fucking stream alone, dude. Oh my god. What do I do? What do I do? I'll pop a mini shield. I'll pop a mini shield for that. Make the reacts a little more entertaining, perhaps. Thank you for the fucking 50 gifteds, dude. Holy shit. I can't open it. Eighteen plus. Ah! Thank you for the fucking fifty gifteds. Blinker City. I'm not hitting a blinker. Is that drugs? Uh, the the one with this one doesn't have kratom in it. There are some that have kratom in it. Uh, which is more classified as something that's like eighteen plus. This one only has like lion's mane mushroom. Uh, ro Rodeola rosea, rosea Seed. It's basically a health shot. All right. Yo, dub in the chat, though, for fucking the boy Toxin. I appreciate the subs, man. Lemon and Doki for the sub, dude. You're a fucking beef. Oh. My God, the boy Toxin's a fucking menace. On the other side. Does it crack in? Stop. 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 Let's do another test here on the old TikTok. Does it crack him? Sunny D edition. Stupid ass fucking promo. Baldino for the sub. The boy talks it for the $10 dono. TBT. Got my family inheritance yesterday and thought I would donate a fraction of it. You didn't need to Love give you. me part of your family inheritance. The boy talks it. What the fuck? Don't dono anymore. Keep your family inheritance. Invest that shit. Not financial advice. Invest that shit. Not financial advice. Stop giving me as much money though, dude. Fucking thank you for the gifteds, man. I appreciate that. Invest the rest of that, dude. My God. Invest it into manifest coin? Yeah, don't do that. It's a rug pull, dude. Whole rug pull it. Thank you for the fucking uh, gifteds though. And the fucking dono, dude of the world, she is believed to be the mastermind of one of the greatest robberies to ever take place in Japan. She was seen looking through jewelry shops. I just applied for a job at 14 places, got rejected from them all. Any advice? Uh, walk into a business and ask for a job. Applying online, you're way more likely to get denied than if you go in person. Uh, also, where did you apply? You probably needed fucking experience at some of those places. If you have no job experience and you're trying to be like a golf expert at a dick sporting goods, they're not going to fucking, they're not going to hire you, right? You got to, you got to walk, wa really, why? Yeah, because they, they like more, number one, it pressures them. That's at least in my experience. Right now, my job is social media. But when I was applying for jobs uh, before social media, when I was working at GNC and all this other shit, um, walking in person and asking for a job was way more likely to land you a job. Even if they were like, hey, you have to do it online, it at least puts your name and your face out there and it shows that you are you have, you know, the the gall and the fucking want to have that job, right? Rather than fucking shooting some stupid ass application online where you put like half of a sentence about you. Put a better application, number one. I don't know what your application looks like. I could go over it if you want, but I'm going to make fun of it if it's stupid. Uh, number two, oh my God, should we do that? I should do that one day. Go over my chat's job applications they've sent in. That would be fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, but no, I mean, like, you got to have a good application. Number two, you got to show initiative that you want the job. That's why going in person usually helps more. Son, keep this up. It's in Tokyo. Go somewhere where you don't need experience, where they're going to hire people that are, it's their first job. 
days before the heist, and a Serbian prosecutor said, Serbian members of the gang were in charge of the dirty jobs, but the real person behind the whole operation was Fasola. She was very good at covering her tracks. It was only thanks to security cameras that Japanese police have been able to trace her and to figure out the identity of the mysterious lady. Fasola was extradited to Italy for a different robbery, but wow. released in 2011. Ultimately, the necklace has never been seen since, and it's unlikely that it is still out there. While these thieves were in Tokyo, they used their hotel phone to make calls to Sri Lanka, and people suspected that the necklace at the was- the Holiday Inn? Imagine you rob a bank, you fucking set up at the Holiday Inn. Free cinnamon buns in the morning. Sold through the black market. By now, it's more than likely that the precious diamonds on this necklace were recut and resold. Brooklyn. At a high-end jewelry store in Brooklyn, $2 million worth of jewelry was taken in 38 seconds. At 5 p.m., three masked gunmen raided Facets Jewelry in Park Slope, Brooklyn. They threatened to shoot a worker while smashing the cases and looting the place of its expensive jewelry. According to the store owner, Irina- I love watching the videos where they try to rob a bank and they can't break the fucking glass. Or not, not a bank, a jewelry store. You ever see that shit? Where they have, like, plexiglass? Because, like, a lot of jewelry stores now have, like, unbreakable glass. Like, they'll walk in with a fucking sledgehammer and just start hitting it, and it won't fucking open. It'll just, it'll just, like, crack, but that's it. In a soule, the guy reaches into his pocket and pulls out a hammer. I didn't even understand how a hammer could fit in there. And he says, and this is how you use a hammer. He smashed three of our main displays. Each of the three men had their own specific job. One man worked with the hammer, while another had a bag filled with jewelry. The third person, meanwhile, operated as a lookout. Soule says, the whole thing lasted 38 seconds. They took two and a half full cases of diamond engagement rings, newer pieces we've designed in-house, and pieces we've collected, Art Deco and Edwardian rings. But obviously, it was less about the jewels they were taking and more about the danger she and her staff found themselves in. Honestly, it's very scary. I couldn't even talk yesterday. I was hyperventilating, crying, sobbing, and shaking. Of course, wow. they had put plenty of preparation into the heist. They knew exactly what cases to take from. How they only took the video, big ticket dude? item. I don't know. This video is long as fuck, but it is good. The guy holding the door yelled, what the are you doing? Don't move. I'm going to shoot. Um, and that's when I was like, okay, you know, we're not moving. We're not doing anything. We're just quiet. We didn't, none of us said a word. The situation touches upon something high-end jewelers face on almost a daily basis. For a lot of these stores, you cannot simply walk in and be buzzed in by the staff. One of the men was buzzed in while the other hid behind. She did not want to deny him access to the store and let him straight in. A lot of jewelers will have to Yo, if somebody's if somebody is wearing a mask and I have to buzz them in, I'm saying, do me a favor, buddy. Uh, let's take that down a bit, right? Uh, you're wearing a fucking ski mask. Let's, let's take the ski mask off before I fucking let you in the building there, bud. Top sauce and face for the sub. GG for the five. Jibbity serpent for the sub. Sonky for the sub. Literally judge someone by their appearance and decide to not let them into their store. Sule said, I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt. It's difficult. You try not to racially profile anyone and not be judgmental or discriminatory. Since then, Sulai has been nervous about opening the door up for anybody. I'm so frightened. I'm not even opening the door to my loyal clients, Sulai said. I even recognize who they are, and I won't let them in. The store said that they will be hiring a security guard and increasing its security measures as a result of this I'm robbery. Just, I'm gonna just keep my shit strapped. Know why? If I own a jewelry store, I'm gonna have a fucking Glock on me. The fuck? D like, genuinely. I'm gonna have a license to carry, and I'm gonna have that bitch on my fucking hip. I'm gonna have a fucking... I'm gonna have a century turret in the fucking ceiling that's ready to shoot a motherfucker. This like, what? I own a jewelry store? Yeah, I'm gonna have some weapon. Happened in January 2023, and nobody has been charged- At least a taser. ...charged yet, so presumably, police are still actively looking for the culprits. Can. Cannes in the south of France is world-renowned for its annual film festival, and in 2013, the Carlton Hotel experienced something straight out of a Hollywood film script. As this news report explains, it was a case of life imitating art. And how about this? A brazen daylight multi-million dollar jewel theft in the very hotel on the French Riviera that was the setting for a movie about a brazen jewel thief. Yo, get this man off the news station. Damn! Damn! He's old. 
played by Cary Grant. It was I do like his voice though. All too real this time. It was a special evening for the hotel. The glamorous Carlton Hotel on the French Riviera is a favorite haunt of the rich and fabulously famous, which makes it a good place to exhibit diamonds and turns out not a bad place to steal them either. The exhibition was organized by the Leviev Diamond House, owned by Israeli billionaire Lev Leviev. And while the staff were loading the necklaces, the thief pulled off a speedy snatch and grab. He walked in with a gun and a scarf covering his Yo, face. Who'd be the easiest famous person to mug? I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this on stream. Who would be the easiest famous person to mug? You, you, yeah, you're gonna. Yo, buddy, I'm. I'm gonna give you a little quick tip. You mug me on the side of the road. You're about to get thirty five dollars. Dead ass. You're gonna get thirty five dollars in a blue water energy Pokemon card because that's what I got in my fucking wallet, bud. You're gonna have jack shit. You're gonna get about fucking nothing. You're gonna steal the clothes on. You're gonna steal the clothes on my back. Okay, you're gonna get the fucking tag top. The only thing you're gonna get is the fucking chain. And at that point, I'll die for this fucking chain, dude. I'll die for that chain. And at that point, you don't even want it, right? You're gonna cut my head off before you get the fucking chain. No, you're gonna have about fucking nothing. Hasbulla, Hasbulla ain't gonna have that much on him, right? You're gonna want to rob somebody that's got. You're gonna mug somebody that's got some shit, right? The Rock. <laughs> I try to rob. I try to mug The Rock. Yo, that would end badly. That would end fucking pretty bad. Brent Rivera, that'd be an easy mug. That'd be an easy mug. Mr. Beast, no. I think Mr. Beast would beat the shit out of somebody. No lie, Mr. Beast is pretty big. Mr. Beast is tall. He's as tall as me, if not taller. The Trend Twins, yeah, no, they'd probably kill me. The only thing they, uh, the only thing I have over them is movement. The Trend Twins are so large that they're slower because they're large. So I think I could snatch something off of them and run. I don't think they'd catch me. But if they got me, oh my god. If that one trend twin got me in his arms, he'd probably go and fold me like I'm a like, he'd be like Bender in Futurama and just fucking snap my spine. King for the three. Sorry I can't donate much, dude. You don't have to donate at all. I appreciate any dono. And the staff simply had no other option. The but to... Island Boys? Nah, they probably they 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 probably stab me or some shit. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to rob the Island Boys. Hand it over. He did this all in the space of 27 seconds. The Carlton Hotel is located across a beautiful and busy seafront promenade. All the thief had to do then. Adam was... Sandler. Adam Sandler would be an easy mug, but why would you ever want to rob Adam Sandler? You know what I mean? Like you're gonna, you're gonna, you're really, you're gonna mug Adam Sandler. You're gonna mug out after all he did for you. After Grown Ups One and Grown Ups Two, you're gonna mug Adam Sandler. After Big Daddy and Longest Yard, you're gonna, you're gonna mug Adam Sandler. Really? Like that's just dickhead shit, right? GRZ for the sub. They for the sub. Simply blend in with the massive. The Queen. Yeah, now rot mugging the Queen would be pretty. I mean, the secure. If the Queen was alone, mugging the Queen would be pretty fucking easy. Uh, but you know, if she got security guards or some shit, yeah, mugging any, any old ass royal family member would be pretty easy. Crowd outside, John O'Connor, a former head- She's dead? That makes it even easier. ...of the British police force was almost full of praise about the criminal when speaking to- That was to fucked up, I apologize. ...CBS. That's a, a classic way of getting away with it. Blend into the crowd. It's a brilliant piece. Of... Actually, no, it would make it harder. It would be easier to mug the queen alive because then she's out and about. If you're gonna mug the queen's grave, oh my god, isn't she in some royal yard or something? Like it'd probably be impossible to even get in there. Uh, of utterly simplistic, easy robbery. Initially, the Carlton thought that the thief took forty million euro worth of jewels, which is equivalent to about forty-three million dollars. The royal yard, dude. I don't know how royal shit works. See, now I'm pissing off my European viewers. Please don't leave. Please don't leave the stream. I'm not trying to make fun of the queen. However, they realized later on that it was 100 million euro worth of jewels that they had taken, or wow. 109 million dollars. One French. Police officer told the Guardian, Thieves see can as rich pickings. A full and urgent operation is underway to catch the- You mean the British, not European? Yo, somebody from Switzerland might like the Queen, I don't know. Culprit and recover- You're from the Netherlands, you might like the Queen. I don't know, you're closer than I am. These jewels. Another police officer told the Nice Matin newspaper- We dropped 200 viewers? Yeah, because I've been on this video for an hour.
Uh, the raid took place in broad daylight at a time when hundreds of tourists were enjoying the sunshine. It could not have been more daring. The thief took advantage of the crowds and the fact it was Sunday and the atmosphere was relaxed. As you can imagine, the thief is suspected to be a member of the Pink Panthers and the heist has all the characteristics of their trademark snatch-and-grab robberies. Some even believe that it could be connected to thieves from the gang who escaped a Swiss jail that Thursday. On July 25th, Milan Popperick was freed after fellow gang members rammed a gate and overcame security with AK-47S. Popperick is the third Pink Panther to break out of a Swiss jail in 2013. Ten days after the robbery, loss adjusters offered $1.3 million for information leading to the recovery of the stolen items and sent out released images of some of the stolen jewelry, but they that, had not heard That it. jewelry? Like, how much do you think that necklace is? Fucking 400 grand. Dicky Bird since. Nah, probably less. Hong Kong, part two. Our final robbery takes us back to the beautiful city of Hong Kong. It was possibly the fastest amount of money a thief could possibly make, where they accumulated $3 million in just 10 seconds. In 2017, thieves targeted Chow Sang Sang Jewelry, which is also situated in the Simshard Sui district. Except this time round, they did not even have to step foot inside the store to make the robbery. Expensive jewelry was on display by the window, and two thieves decided to take sledgehammers, smash the windows, and take all of the items in a bag. A third person was working with them and allowed them to flee on a motorbike. A police spokesperson said, the stolen property includes a diamond necklace, jade earrings, a diamond bracelet, and diamond rings. They were both wearing face masks. I mean, that's kind of dumb as fuck. You're really gonna put jewelry on display right by the window? Fucking 2 a.m. I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna come at that bitch with a fucking sledgehammer and just yoink it. Hats, but the police- The boy Toxin for the three. I wanted to tell you made me feel like uh, a part of a family since day one. Thank you, Joe. What a fucking dub, dude. Thank you for the fucking dono. It's ...concluded that they were not ethnically Chinese. Ultimately, they were done and dusted in the space of 10 seconds. So even if the clerk called the police, the police may not have even picked up the phone by the time they were still there. Nine pieces of jewelry were snatched in total. Apparently, they left an empty suitcase and a paper bag at the scene, which could prove useful for fingerprints. In September of that year, a woman was walking through Kowloon Park and noticed something sparkling in the ground. It was a diamond ring. She assumed it was fake and picked it up. However, when she got back to work, she realized that this diamond was found only 150 meters away from a jewelry store that was recently robbed. She thought it was a normal reaction to report it to the police and said her find was nothing. Fuck that! Fuck that! I find a fucking diamond ring in the water? I ain't reporting shit. I'm not reporting shit. I'm keeping that. If it's somebody, like, yo, if I know it's from the jewelry store, I'm keeping that fucking ring. If I, if it's like, oh, somebody lost the ring and it's an individual, I'd be like, okay, here's your ring back, right? Like, I, oh, you lost your ring. That's sad, right? Here's your wedding ring. Some ring that they fucking yoinked and they dropped on their way out fucking two months ago. I'm going to keep that shit. Fuck that. Jim for the sub. They for the sub. Thing worth reporting. She worked as a cleaner, so this piece of jewelry could have been life-changing for her. And thankfully. All right, next video. That was a fucking dub, though. What a Wild West duel really looked like. This is a five-minute one. We should be able to get through this in about, you know, maybe 45 minutes. It's July 1865 in Springfield, Missouri. The gunfighter Wild Bill Hickok loses his favorite gold watch in a poker game to Dave Tut, a gambler who's also been flirting with an old flame of his. Wild Bill hears that the next day Tut plans to further humiliate him by showing off his watch in the middle of town. That day, Wild Bill walks into the and town's- And now I challenge you to a duel, Dave Tut! I'm gonna fucking shoot you right between the eyes, sonny! Where, revolver in hand, and spots Tut with his watch. The townspeople disperse, and the two men stand alone, 75 yards apart. 75? 75 yards apart? Ain't no way you're fucking hitting a motherfucker 75 yards apart. Half a fu- over half a fucking football field, I'm gonna turn and shoot, I'm missing. There's- no one's hitting that shot. That's far as shit. With a fucking revolver? Soul for the sub, Jim for the sub. You might hit him in like the arm. From here, it's a classic quick draw duel. The men stand sideways with their guns cocked, hands hovering over their holsters. They reach for their guns and fire at the same time. Tut miss- No way I flinched on that shit. Oh, fuck. This is badly- I'm getting into this video. While Bill doesn't. He shoots Tut between his ribs, killing him. GG's. That's one of the only quick draw duels we can historically verify. 
Since the 1860s, Wild West fiction has convinced many people that cowboys spent a good chunk of their time dueling. Cheap fictional books called dime novels, newspapers, and later comics and films took real-life gunfighters like Wild Bill Hickok and Wyatt Earp and exaggerated their stories. Cowboys became folk heroes, noble gunslingers shooting down bad guys on the lawless frontier. In reality, they were both gambling addicts that got mad at each other and shot each other. A noble hero? You stole my fucking watch and, you, and you're and you talking to my ex-girlfriend. Let's fucking duel, buddy. That's what it was. Suge for the three. You're my favorite uh, streamer and I'm trying to watch you more because you're funny, uh, but the Nodi doesn't work all the time. Well, if you join the Discord, the Nodi always goes out on the Discord. Scott for the five. Uh, recently, you've been my favorite content creator. I love watching your videos. First time on stream. Uh, I think you deserve my best. Thank you. Soul for the sub. Jim for the sub. <laughs> Do that when you lost 250 on roulette? Nah. Maybe 300. And maybe 300, I'd be like, all right, duel me. But there's. The Atlantic City Casino. Just pointing a revolver at the building. Actually, a lot of debate among historians about how violent the Wild West really was. The numbers say American frontier towns were extraordinarily homicidal. But as Robert Dijkstra points out, the stats can be misleading since we calculate homicide rate by homicides per 100,000 people, meaning that one free homicide in a 500-person frontier town could give you an absurdly high crime rate. Depending on when and where you restrict your sample, you could wind up with homicide rates from zero to over a thousand. However, even conservative estimates say that the Old West was about as murderous as today's most violent U.S. cities. And this makes sense, gangs but of bandits- But I mean, that's still pretty fucking violent. Like, like, Detroit, people are dying, like, a lot. I mean, it's, yeah, 39 per 100,000, but that's still, like, a lot of people getting killed. And this makes sense, gangs of bandits roam the frontier, and law enforcement was often weak or corrupt. Cowboys had a role in this violence as well. Skilled gunfighters found work as protection men for cattle companies. Before the days of vast fenced-in ranches, these cowboys rode along the distant edges of ranches and shot cattle thieves on sight. Oh my god, yo, why am I flinching? But most importantly, the Wild West combined a culture of gambling and drinking with a bunch of gun-wielding men. The occasional drunken shootout was inevitable. That's how a lot of violence in the Old West happened. Gunfight. Yo, I would love to sit in a room where motherfuckers actually played, like in the 1800s, where motherfuckers actually played Russian roulette. I wouldn't want to be in the fucking table. I wouldn't want to be around the table. I'd want to be in the back, right? I would want to see, like, how, what are the convert? What are the convert? Is it silent? Like, what do you think it's like? Five men sitting at a table, or not men, you know, I'm not going to discriminate. Five people, right? Sitting at a table, right? They got a bullet and a fucking revolver, and they're just taking turns fucking trying to spin in, see if they kill themselves. Like, what are they talking about? Is it just a regular conversation, or are they just dead? I, I would assume it's quiet. Like, like dead silence. Like, mad as shit. And then, you know, you, like, say, say the, the one guy across from me I fucking hate, he's, like, praying I fucking shoot myself, right? I fucking go, and it goes nothing. I say, fuck you, you dumb motherfucker, and then he shoots himself. They probably talk shit. It were almost never honorable, planned-out duels. They were spontaneous and sloppy. Even Wild Bill Hickok's story doesn't end in a quick-draw duel. He beats Jack McCall in poker, and the next day McCall gets drunk, pushes through the saloon doors, pulls out a revolver, and shoots him while his back is turned. I didn't flinch that time. I knew it was coming. Robert DeArmond writes that Wild West gunfights were generally sudden, impromptu affairs, and gunfighters took every advantage available. When Langford Farmer Peel got into a gunfight over a gambling match, he and his opponent shot each other until they ran out of bullets. Then Peel, with three bullets in him, crawled to his opponent and won the duel by stabbing him in the chest with a bowie knife. Peel recovered. Holy shit! Yo, that's not even a duel! That's not even a duel, that's just murdering somebody! But he lived and died by this kind of no-rules gunfighting. One night at a saloon, he got into an argument with outlaw John Bull. Peel challenged Bull to a duel, but Bull said he needed to go up to his room to get his gun. 
Eventually, Peel assumed Bull was too afraid to fight and left to see his mistress across the street. She held Peel's right arm while they walked. Suddenly, Bull emerged from the saloon with his shot him in the back. gun in hand. Peel tried to grab his own gun, but the woman was still clutching his shooting arm. Bull fired three bullets past the mistress and killed Peel. Fiction Yo, that's gets- like that's like kind of pussy shit, though. That's like <laughs> I know I'm I know I'm sitting here in 2023 saying like motherfuckers from the wild west were pussies, but like yo, that's kind of bitch shit though. Yo, that's kind of bitch shit. You you really gonna you really just gonna shoot him while he's like you know he's not ready? The wild west duel wrong. Duels weren't formal, clean, or honorable. The people of the frontier were human. They drank booze, broke the law, and lost their temper. Did he ever check brownies the- DMs? Yeah. Uh, he, I, but I, I messaged him cause I was like, I don't know. Okay. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna, yeah, no, he did message. He did message me on Twitch, but I confirmed, I was trying to confirm with him on TikTok if it was actually him or his account got hacked. Uh, ghost in NY for the sub Rusty for the three. Uh, V nasty for the sub cashy for the sub, uh, sand for the 381. Uh, I watch every one of your videos. You're my favorite person. Wanted to thank you for that. Duh. So, uh, Sue for the three. <gasps> oh my God. All right. He read that. The gunfights that actually happened often involved alcohol, gambling, and cheap shots, which is more appropriate for a place called the Wild West. So thanks for tuning in to another History Dose episode. If you like what you saw, make sure to subscribe, like the video, maybe even share it with some friends. And consider donating. That was four years ago? Wow. Uh, a girl mistakenly ate 96 marijuana gummies. <laughs> this is what happened to her brain. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be laughing because I hope she's okay. But like, if she's okay, that's just pretty funny, right? If she died, that's sad, right? But like, if I had a friend accidentally eat 96 gummies and they were just high as shit for like seven days, that would be pretty funny. Dr. Bernard here. This case was an accident that's becoming more prevalent in the United States. I'm going to describe to you what a case of it looks like medically, but know that the presentation can look different based on the- Bro, it's because motherfuckers be buying shit that's like stony patch kids. If you're going to buy- Bro. Fuck, I don't even know where my edibles are. If you're going to buy edibles, fucking leave it in the container and and buy edibles that look like edibles. Stop buying- Stop buying edibles that are fucking nerds ropes, and it's just a nerds rope that says 400 milligrams THC on the back. Like, bitch. Somebody's gonna open that motherfucker and eat it, thinking it's a regular ass nerds rope. A case of it looks like medically, but know that the presentation- Like, what was that? That was like crunch berry THC. H. So a massive ingestion will affect a toddler different than it will an adolescent- It was a toddler? No way a toddler ate 96 edibles. Different than it will an adult. In the United States, your local poison center can be reached by phone at 1-800-222-1222. Anytime you might think one of these- Can you die from that? You could maybe have a heart attack, but like you can't OD on an edible. In my not- I don't know. I got to Google this. See, I don't want to spread misinformation. Can you overdose on a marijuana edible? Overdoses from marijuana are only fatal in extremely rare cases due to heart complications, but they can just be very uncomfortable. But 96 edibles? Bro, I'll eat one and I'll be... I, yo, I, I ate... There was one day I ate like two and a half. Bro, I swear to God, I couldn't get off the couch. 96? I'd, I'd, be, I'd, be, in, I'd be in the multiverse. Accidents has happened. A clinically trained toxicology specialist will be there on the phone to help. I'll also tell you why the toxicity of this massive ingestion happens the way that it does, as well as some steps. I want to know how many milligrams it is. You can take to help prevent. That much THC can kill you. I mean, it depends on the person. It depends what health conditions you have. It depends on a lot. To overdose from eating marijuana is very hard to do because, like. 
Dude, I've seen, I watch a Twitch streamer named Cupins that'll eat like RSO tablets that if I ate it, I'd be high for like 10 days. He'll eat it and he's just like, high. Something like this from happening. We'll see. Watch the video. Should you be in the presence of children? A girl mistakenly ate 96 gummy edibles for lunch. This is what happened to her. Okay, who the fuck's eating gummy edibles for lunch? Brain. And gummies for lunch. He is a 12 year old girl presenting. She was 12? Oh my god! to the emergency room with a possible head injury. Her mother, Rebecca, tells the admitting nurse that she found NP struggling on the floor. When Rebecca tried talking to her daughter, none of the words that came out made any sense. And he Yo! Was fucking... Yo, um, oh my god. No, that would, be the, that would be the most terrifying experience ever. Being 12 years old and accidentally eating 96 edibles and not knowing you ate weed, you would be thinking... You would genuinely think you're dying. Like, genuinely think you're dying. Especially on that amount, you'd probably be fried in five minutes. Like, it would be absurd. No way. If she was eating the 96 gummies, she had to be high while she was eating them. 96. You're, it would take you 30 minutes to eat that many was born into a happy family, but her dad, Tony, would sometimes get in trouble with her mom because of one particular kind of food that he loved to eat. Tony had an herbal habit. When he was younger, those herbs would somehow just find their way into his lungs. He would totally have no idea how they got in there. But as a connoisseur of sound, natural plants that come directly from the earth, Tony- Oh my god, just say he's eating edibles. What the fuck is this bullshit? Oh, the, the, it somehow found his way into his lungs. Say he's ripping fucking joints. He's ripping doobies. That's what he's doing, right? Strongly believed in an oil extract that his friend would prepare from this plant and put into brownies, cookies, and gummy candies. This oil contained all of the cannabinoid compounds that exert the desired effect from consuming the herb in its various forms. Just having some delicious treats, he thought. One day, Tony accidentally ate too many gummy edibles. As he lost track of where he was, he walked out of the house to go buy some milk, and then he fell down the stairs. Rebecca, unhappy with her husband living like this, confiscated all of his edibles. But Tony was undeterred. One day, he purchased a mega stash. In the kitchen cabinet was a bag of regular candy. He thought of a good way to hide this from his wife, so he mixed this mega stash of edibles into this bag of candy. Yeah, it's the dad's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's the dad's fault. I was going to say, the kid, uh, the kid probably snuck into like the room and ate the edibles. It's the dad's fault. Yep, there it is. Bro! Bro, if you're you have a kid, you have a kid and you're like, yeah, let me let me hide the edibles from my wife by mixing the kids candy with my edibles. I thought originally like he had the bag in his room and the kid took it, right? Simply disguise so that no one would know as he placed the bag back. But still, bro, you're telling me that kid got five You're telling me that kid ate those edibles and wasn't like Like, something's off, right? Like, if I had, if I give you a Sour Patch Kid and a Stony Patch Kid, you're going to eat that bitch, and you're going to be like, this one tastes like ass. Into the cabinet. The next day, NP decided to look for some snacks while watching some YouTube videos. In the cabinet was a really large bag of delicious-looking candy as she grabbed it to go and sat down on the couch. On the first taste, NP thought that the gummy candies were delicious, such a soft and pleasing texture while chewing with just the right kind of cherry flavor, completely oblivious to the fact that there was a dose of psychoactive cannabinoids in each one. She had no idea that if she ate more than one or two, something would start to happen. She kept grabbing more and Bro, more- even like two. She'd probably be like fucking fried on two. You eat 96 edibles? Oh my god. Do you think she died? I mean, we'll see. From the bag as she kept eating while watching her videos. As the hour That might permanently hurt you. If you ate that many, like, you probably wouldn't die. Like, I'm gonna guess she didn't die. They probably had to pump her stomach, number one. Number two, she was pro- It probably hurt her brain badly. Like, off that many.
passed and Pi started feeling different. At first, she didn't know exactly what was happening. She could feel the sides of her eyes start to get dark. Her heart started beating faster and more pronounced. She noticed that her breathing was different than normal, but she didn't know why. The images on her tablet screen started to look funny to her as she laid her head back, but then her stomach started to squirm. At first, she didn't realize that she had eaten nearly the entire bag of candy. But as she looked, the contents no were- No way she ain't green out, bruh. The first time I ate an edible, I fucking threw up. I ate two and a half. I was supposed to eat one. Or I ate two. Two or three. I don't know. I ate like three times the amount I was supposed to. I fucking threw up. I thought I was in purgatory. Like genuinely, like it, like that shit was crazy. Like, that, <laughs> there's no way, there's no way that she, that she was like, okay, for the first bit. It was probably like 20 minutes in and she was skitzing. This is fake, Joe. Look it up. I don't think this is a fake story. ...were mostly consumed and absorbing into her body. And as her stomach felt more and more unstable, she stumbled into the bathroom ready to heave, not because she wanted to, but because she felt that something was going to come up, but it never did. On the way outside to get some fresh air, MP stumbled out of the door. Unaware of where she really was, she fell down the stairs. Hearing this chaos and completely unaware of what had happened, Rebecca rushed out to find her daughter on the floor. Asking NP if she was okay, Rebecca couldn't get a coherent response. In a panic, Rebecca thinking that her daughter had just sustained a head injury falling down, she calls for 911, and NP's brought to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, doctors noted that NP was somnolent. When they could get a response from her, the words weren't coherent. She couldn't tell them where she was, and she couldn't tell them her name. Because she fell down the stairs, they were concerned that maybe she had sustained a head injury, but a scan showed that everything was normal. A blood test also found nothing abnormal in NP. If she consumed a majority they of- They wouldn't do a drug test? That'd be the first thing I'd do if I was a fucking hospital person. A doctor. I don't know why I said hospital person. <laughs> Her dad's mega stash of gummy edibles, and those edibles created an obtunded mental state for NP. How would the medical team be able to discern the difference between head injury falling down the stairs and strung out from an accidental massive ingestion of edibles? The cannabis plant has an abundance of chemicals in it that are known to have a physiologic effect on the body. The ones that are psychoactive are cannabinoids, the most well-known being Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, also known as THC. This shouldn't be confused with CBD, which is cannabidiol, which also comes from the cannabis- My grandpa told me he got edibles and showed me them, and he was like, he was like, yeah, these ones like- he was like, these are edibles. I'm like, I'm like, let me see them. And he shows me them. And they're just, it's like 0.1% THC. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no. I'm like, I'm like, these are C. I had to explain to him that like, there's a difference. Like CBD won't get you high. CBD is like the health aspect of marijuana, right? THC is what gets you like, but your eyes are red and you're high as shit and you can't drive. You can't do anything, but like druggy POV SMH. Yeah. No, like CBD is like, it, it helps like with like anxiety and stuff. It, or it can, it has like a lot of health properties, but it's not like, it's not what's going to get you high. Rusus for the 10. You're the best. Thanks for making the content. Thank you or the best content. Thank you. Ant for the sub. I'm John for the three. I had a thousand milligram Mac and cheese and it gave me a seizure. They had edibles in mac and cheese, and it actually gave you a seizure. Brunsky for the three. Uh, we know it was you who robbed the jewelry store in New Jersey. I didn't rob the jewelry store in New Jersey. Rusus for the three, set for the five. Play the edit of you and Brooke on my account. Plus for the sub, goes for the sub. Austin just texted me and said, I woke up from my grandpa nap. Why the fuck does he go to bed at like 4 p.m. on a fucking Friday? Oh, it's me and Brooke making the gingerbread house. That's nice. All right. Uh, got seen for the three. When I, uh, when I was a kid, I saw a water bottle from the freezer and it had a B on top of it, but it was upside down. I thought it meant an A. I started chugging it. Turns out it was vodka and my uncle had put it there. I was freaking out. No way you started chugging it thinking it was like water. You chugged it and you didn't realize it was vodka the second it hit your mouth. I feel like I'd instantly vomit. If I was a kid and I started accidentally drinking 
till after? Really? Uh, did I miss anything else? No. This plant and has been shown to help with seizure disorder in children whose seizures yeah, don't- Yeah, vodka tastes like trash. ...respond well to multiple medicines. CBD doesn't appear to be psychoactive. This brings us to the idea of absorption. Many times when people think of cannabis, they think of inhalation. Normally when we breathe, the oxygen from the air inhaled is exchanged for carbon dioxide exhaled. That inhaled oxygen sticks to the red blood cells and is then circulated throughout the body. When oxygenated blood exits the heart, a large percentage of it goes from the aortic arch into the carotid artery and into the brain. But if someone is- Well, another thing is edibles are going to affect your brain much differently than inhaling marijuana. Getting high off of smoking is entirely different off of getting high off an edible. Getting high off an edible, you could actually have hallucinogenic properties comparable to- like, if you smoke a lot of weed, you're never going to hallucinate. If you ate a shitload of edibles, you could theoretically hallucinate slightly uh, because of how your body digests the weed versus inhaling the weed. It's a different compound that affects you. Inhaling smoke from an herb instead of oxygen from the air, then the exchanged gas from the smoke gets into the blood, pumped out of the heart, into the aortic arch, into the carotid artery, and directly into the brain. This is how Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol can exert its psychoactive effect when inhaled because it gets to the brain quickly through this route of administration. But NP didn't inhale. She ate the edibles instead, meaning that there's a difference in absorption. Anything eaten by mouth goes into the stomach, makes its way into the small intestines, and then is absorbed into the liver you where- You couldn't pay me any amount of money to eat 96 edibles. No amount of money. I don't care if it was a billion fucking dollars. If you gave me 96 edibles, I'm going to talk. I'm going to walk out of there a different. I'm probably going to die, but I'm going to walk out of there a different fucking dude. I'm, my name's going to be fucking Jimmy when I get out of that fucking coma, right? Why is bro talking about weeds so weirdly? I don't know. He's talking about it like it's crack. 978 for the sub. It's processed. It's metabolized and broken down. So when something is eaten, it doesn't go to the brain first. The interesting thing about Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol is that in the liver, it's broken down to 11-hydroxy tetrahydrocannabinol. One goal of liver metabolism is to make chemicals more hydrophilic. Hydro meaning water and philic meaning affinity for. Making a chemical have more water affinity means that you're making it more water soluble so it can dissolve in water and concentrate in the urine so it can be eliminated from the body. Hence why the liver is called the detox organ. Water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. So when chemicals contain more hydrogens and oxygens, they should technically have more affinity for water. And when we look at the name 11 hydroxy tetrahydrocannabinol, this metabolite of delta 9 THC from gummy edibles makes sense. However, nature isn't straightforward because 11 hydroxy THC. Oh my fucking God, get to it. You're about to say the same thing I said five fucking minutes ago but you're explaining it in a nerd way. You're explaining it like you're fucking Walter White. Explain it like you're Jesse Pinkman. That shit's gonna get you high as fuck. He happens to be even more psychoactive than Delta 9. There it is. That shit's gonna get you more high, more potent. You're gonna get fried off of that. THC, meaning as NP mistakenly ate her dad's secret stash of gummy edibles, her liver turned the megadose of THC into a megadose of an even more active version of THC. The state of Colorado did research and estimated that 11-hydroxy-THC from an edible could be almost six times more potent than Delta-9-THC that goes directly to the brain during inhalation. Wow. But it doesn't stop here. Inhaling the smoke is known to exert the full psychoactive effect within minutes. But when an edible is consumed by mouth, the process of passing through the gut into the liver, then through the bloodstream to the brain can take an hour or more. And during that time, especially if the person has no idea that there's cannabinoids contained within, one can consume a dose 10 times or more compared to inhalation. Well, that's a, that's a big thing when people start taking edibles or even like mushrooms and shit. Because people will eat an edible and it'll be like 45 minutes and they'll be like, I'm not feeling shit. I'm going to eat another one. Bang. They double the dose, right? But that first one still hasn't hit them. And so then that first one hits them 30 minutes later, an hour and a half in, and they're like, damn, I'm high as shit. The second one hasn't even affected me yet. And then they get double high. It's, it's worse on mushrooms because you're going to fucking hallucinate, but... 
Uh, on edibles, it could also be bad. Laden onset with the effect getting more and more intense as more gummies are eaten. Somebody said so boring. See you later. See you later, Henriksen. See you never, Henriksen. And absorbed into the blood, bringing us back to NP. In the emergency room, the results of a urine toxicology screen returns, and it tells the medical team that present in NP's urine are cannabinoids. This should make sense. The liver is there to make chemicals hydrophilic, and the kidneys have eliminated some cannabinoids into the urine, but for NP, she's still uptunded. We know that the liver's attempt to metabolize the cannabinoids created an even more potent psychoactive compound in the first pass, but why is she still like this? This brings us back to hydrophilicity. If a chemical mixes well with water, it won't mix well with oil and vice versa. So, if there exists an affinity for water, then the opposite case of affinity- So you get less high by chugging vegetable oil. There it is. There it is. For oil exists- The solution. It's something called lipophilicity. Lipo from Greek referring to fats or oils. NP's dad, Tony, had a friend who made the gummy edibles that he ate. These candies were infused with an oil that was the extract of all the cannabinoids from raw plant material and was infused into the gummies to make the edibles. Delta 9 THC is lipophilic. 11 hydroxy THC is still lipophilic, though slightly less than Delta 9. The nerves in all the body are covered by a myelin sheath, which helps conduct signals faster. And oh my god, somebody redeemed Dent chat. Relax, relax. It's not that fucking serious. These are made of fats. The brain and the cells within are also made of majority fats. All of this bringing us to the idea of distribution. As Delta 9 and 11 hydroxy THC reaches the brain, it deposits in. Because of the lipophilicity, it preferentially stays in fat tissue, like the brain, as opposed to staying in the bloodstream. An amount of 11 hydroxy THC will make it back to the liver again to be broken down yet another time to 11 nor 9 carboxy THC which isn't psychoactive, but still oh, chemistry. Uh... Philic enough to be contained in the organs and slowly leach out into the bloodstream and make its way into the urine. I hated chem. Oh yeah, no, chemistry was my least favorite science. In detectable amounts for more than- I liked biology and physics. And an, uh, anatomy was pretty chill. So we know Delta 9 THC edibles become an even more potent version of THC in the liver. We know it preferentially distributes into fat tissue, notably the brain. But why does it produce the psychoactive effect? Yo, what dog, I ain't give a fuck about this shit. Tell me what happened to the motherfucker that ate 96 edibles like it was fucking nothing. Well, Delta 9 and 11 hydroxy THC both happen to fit into structures in the brain where the nerves connect. Naturally, our bodies produce endogenous cannabinoids, endo meaning from within and genus referring to production. Our body doesn't make THC, but it makes compounds that appear to be similar in function. Endogenous cannabinoids appear to be used to regulate other neurotransmitters that actively send signals throughout the nerves. When THC is present, it looks like the concentrations of neurotransmitters change. This is what produces the effect, and because such a huge dose of it is floating around in NP, it explains what's happening to her brain. This disruption in normal neurotransmitter levels in the brain could be responsible for cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, where herb consumers will empty their stomach multiple times because emesis can be mediated by some neurotransmitters. But there's a lot more to cannabinoid neuropharmacology than what we know about today. Some strains of plant will change neurotransmitter concentrations Oh my god, get to the fucking point! I'm gonna freak out. I'm gonna freak out. Oh yeah, people fast forwarded here. Whether it's a stimulant or a depressant isn't accurate. An interesting point is that cannabinoid receptors don't appear to be in abundance on the brainstem. This is important because this is where the respiratory centers are that control our breathing, meaning for adolescents and adults who may accidentally ingest a massive dose of edibles, it typically won't lead to respiratory arrest. This appears to be a different situation for toddlers, who we now have some more data on in context of cannabis poisoning, as it appears some of them who do mistakenly take a massive ingestion of THC 
may need respiratory support, usually different than in the adolescent and adult. How the fuck does a toddler accidentally eat weed? Case. Because of this, for young children, if you suspect accidental cannabis edible injection- Oh my god. Oh my god. Issued a notice that incidents of accidental pediatric edible ingestion- See, That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, you're telling me- You're telling me it's a- it's fucking nine at night, you're in a semi-dark room, and you grab fucking crunch berries. That you're gonna think that those shits aren't fucking- Like, you- you could easily fucking miss that, right? You're- you're in the candy aisle, you read can- uh, Cannaburst? Oh, uh, kind of Starburst? Eat fucking four of them. Has been increasing, with more calls being logged to poison control centers across the United States. Some of the reason could be the fact that the packaging of these edibles is designed to look like candy that you find at stores. If they're cookies or brownies, the packaging doesn't need to resemble anything because of the clear plastic containers that we often find these goods in. There's also a Delta 8 THC of which product- but Also just like read the fucking package. Like I, like I know they look similar, but it clearly says Stony Patch Kid not Sour Patch Kid, and it's some high-ass... Like, dude, you ever read the fucking thing? It's I'm Googling it. Stony Patch Kid, dude, it'll be some high-ass fucking gummy bear. Looking fried as shit on that motherfucker. Like, you're telling me, like, yeah. They look kind of the same. Right? Like, kind of the same. But if you're gonna eat them, I feel like I'd recognize that this isn't this. Like, I would see, like, Stony Patch, Weed eyeball gummy bears these have two eyes and they're happy this one looks like it's gonna make me see god like i know the difference products are becoming more common not a 10 year old though that's true it's generally accepted that its effects are roughly the same as Delta 9 THC if it's not a little less potent, maybe causing a little different feel. And the metabolic pathway for it is similar. Joe, you're losing viewers. I don't give a fuck, dude. People don't want to watch this video. We'll go to a different video after this. We're almost fucking done. There's a minute left. Creating 11 hydro- Oh no! Oh no! I lost me. Oh no! I lost viewers. See Delta 8 THC, which appears more potent than Delta 8 THC. A new story- It's crazy that I'm even averaging this many right now, dude. Once September hits, I'll be back at like 3k. In late 2022, noted a death caused by this Delta 8 THC toxicity in Northern Virginia, confirmed by the chief medical examiner, with another case listed in the FDA notice predating the news story by at least a few months. Both of these deaths could possibly be associated with the patients not receiving Bro, early is, respiratory support is during- he ever getting back to the kid though? Or was that really a fake fucking story? The stability of the compounds contained within, so those aren't recommended places. There's also medication entry. It usually doesn't get consistent. Accident. Child Protective Services did have to be notified by the medical team because of federal law. But as it turned out, this was an accident. After some observation in the hospital, care from the medical team and awareness for the parents, NP was able to make a full recovery. Thanks so See, much. That's what I said, bro. She's gonna be geeking for three days, then she's fine. Yeah, you might have to go to a hospital because you ingested three. Oh my god, 3,500 milligrams. Oh, wait, no, that's of caffeine. That's a different video. Somebody ate 180 gummy melatonins for lunch. I could tank that. I've always, I did that one time. I got sponsored by a melatonin drink, and I remember going on Discord back in 2020 because they paid me like 100 bucks to do an ad. Uh, back when I had like 100k and it was like 2020 bro and I fucking I chugged a melatonin drink and I wanted to see how long I could stay awake I was fucking sitting there like eyes fucking barely up uh, side for the three squinty for the sub Colton for the sub uh, hate for the sub rusty for the three uh, on Yom Kippur I mistook grape juice for wine I almost drank half a bottle uh, meanwhile, I had COVID, so I couldn't taste anything. My molars were taken out earlier, so my mouth was numb. I can't remember after, uh, that all I wanted was some grape juice. You drank a whole bottle of wine? Big boy for the sub, uh, and for the three. Uh, it's time we get some merch. I'm working on it. Sars for the sub, straight for the three. I'm too high for this video, Tar. Tay for the thousand buddies. Uh, best advice equipment-wise, uh, for starting a channel? I mean, face cam, don't, like, get the shit that's, like, mad expensive. Start out with a base setup and then move up from there. Maybe like a, t a regular 1080p webcam or like a $400 camera, a uh, decent PC, something that you could record with, okay mic, uh, and then just slowly upgrade your shit as you start making money. That's what I did. I don't know for the sub. All right, chat.
I gotta go pee real quick, then we go next video. Coming down 30 seconds. Go. We're back. All right. Next video. The strangest athlete in sports history, and then we have a short film. To ever play sports. Nope. According to hold one up, team. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, here we go. Manny Ramirez is the strangest athlete to ever play sports. According to one teammate during spring training, he had to sleep in the same bed as him because he was afraid of the dark. The man who sold him testosterone says Manny had them Hey, 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 let's relax. You know, the dark's sometimes fucking scary, okay? Let's keep it real. You know, I still look under my bed at night. You got it. Real talk, real talk. You don't know if there's a demon under there. You ain't gonna know. Jerry hotel room so he could read him bedtime stories. In Boston, the team psychologist printed out a laminated piece of paper that reminded him how many outs there were. Oh, he secretly gave teammates alcohol spiked with Viagra before games, was arrested twice, fought a teammate, fought a clubhouse attendant, fought a 64 year old man, and peed in the outfield, all while having one of the most productive offensive careers in baseball history. He's been accused of cheating as well as a crime so serious he may never be involved in Major League Baseball again. But at 49 years old, Manny still continues to play and do some very strange things. Manny Ramirez is so impulsive that while playing in Japan, a fan from America who never even played high school baseball randomly gave him a hitting tip. Manny Ramirez hired him as his full-time hitting coach Coach, and it worked. What? <laughs> Some random guy? Yo, choke up on the bat a little more. I'm going to give you $250,000 a year to give me advice. Just ch just hold the bat a little tighter, man. You want to be my professional batting coach? Like, out of nowhere? Worked. <laughs> He once gifted Dustin Pedroia a $20,000 Rolex. As Pedroia was unwrapping the gift, Manny took the Rolex back and smashed it with a baseball bat. This sounds like something a very arrogant and cocky person would do, but despite popular belief, Manny Ramirez is an extremely shy person. In high Bro, he gave somebody a 20k Rolex that psych bitch wonk and fucking smacked the shit out of it. Nah, that is fucking crazy. That's fuck you money. If he if he intended on doing that to fake give somebody a Rolex and then just fucking break that shit, unfazed, just waste twenty G's to piss somebody off. Fat for the sub went for the three. Uh, watch this house has people in it. What? I don't know for the sub side for the three. Squinty for the sub. Calton for the sub. Hate for the sub. High school, he knew very little English, would wake up at 4.30 a.m. to train, then go back to sleep and regularly skipped class. Manny Ramirez never even graduated high school. His entire future relied on him getting drafted. He was selected 13th overall in the 1991 draft. The craziest part about this his family literally had no idea. He was the high school player of the year. The New York Times followed his entire senior season, but according to his sister, they found out he was drafted because a friend saw it on the news. His mom- <laughs> Yo, what? Did he just not talk to his family about what he wanted to do with his life?
mom, dad, and sisters never once saw him play until he was pro because according to them, Manny never invited them or even talked about playing baseball. He was extremely shy with a suspiciously low self-esteem. In his first minor league season, he admitted to teammates he quote, wasn't that good and didn't know why the Indians paid him so much money. He once went into his manager's office crying saying he couldn't hit and according to his manager, tried to quit the team multiple times. What makes this insane- Try to quit the team? Bitch, I'm gonna run their fucking games down for the bag. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna act like I'm I'm just having a bad game. A, a fucking 30 game bad streak. If I suck dick at fucking baseball and they sign me for a million dollar contract, I'm gonna throw their shit. I don't care if I ruin the team for fucking three years. I'm gonna fucking make I'm gonna make that fucking bag before I'm like, oh uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually gonna step away from this is that Manny Ramirez was by far the best player on the team. While in the minors, the Indians insisted on sending him to the Dominican Winter League to gain experience, and this was a complete disaster. The team had a bus driver who would pick up the players staying in the hotel and take them to the stadium every game day. One day, Manny convinced the bus driver to give him the keys to the bus and promised he would pick up the players for him. Uh. Manny instead drove two hours to pick up his BMW, which he shipped from the US. The players waited at the hotel for the bus to come, but since Manny had the bus on the other side of the island, nobody came to pick them up. Manny was kicked off the team the next day. This was the first of many times Manny got in trouble due to his driving. Manny bought his first car right after getting drafted, but according to one of his teammates, couldn't use it because he didn't know how to drive stick shift. From 19 oh, What the fuck? You make a shitload of money in baseball. First thing you buy is a car you can't drive. 1991 until 1996. I thought they were going to say he couldn't drive. Okay. You know, not being able to drive stick shift. All right. He could learn it. Manny Ramirez amassed 17 unpaid tickets in New York City alone, a place he only lived half of the year. He once got pulled over because his windows were illegally tinted. Manny got a ticket, drove off, did an illegal U-turn and got another ticket from the exact same cop less than a minute later. You don't understand. This is how I roll. This is not Miami Vice. This is Miami Vice. And in 1996, he hit a five-year-old boy with his car while leaving the spring training facility. The police emphasized that this incident was not Manny's fault, and he sent the kid gifts in the hospital, so everyone was forgiven. Deep down, Manny seemed like... He hit the kid with a car? How was it not his fault? Did the kid just jump out into the, in front of the vehicle or some shit? Like a shy, innocent person who, despite being a star athlete, played and acted like a kid. In the minors, Manny and his manager, Charlie Manuel, had such a good relationship, the two- Yo, am I wrong in that don't baseball pros in the minor leagues make fucking nothing? Like, in the minor leagues, you get a signing bonus, and then you make, like, 20k a year or some shit. I don't know, yeah, then what the fuck is the point in playing? Like, I know you have a love for the sport, but if you can't even make, like, an actual salary from it, then what the fuck is the point of playing? They make, like, 10K. Some make 720K. Not in the minors. What fucking minor league game are you ever going to watch? I gotta Google this. How much do minor league baseball players make? The average annual salary of a minor league baseball player is 50, 50 grand a year. I mean, that's better. Players in the complex leagues will make a minimum of 4800 per year to 19800 $19, per year in some minor leagues. Okay, so well, I'm getting different answers depending on the fucking website. Bro, 20K a year is so trash. Like, that's not even minimum wage. Is that minimum wage? I mean, it depends on the state, but... ...would play wrestle. Manny stole his pants and would wear them around the clubhouse... ...to get called up. Yeah, but I'm saying if you're one of, like, the lower-end minor league players and you know you're not good enough, like... ...house, and when he was called up to the majors, asked if he was allowed to bring his minor league manager with him. The Indians said no, but he really didn't need him. A few days later, Manny got his first major league hit, which may be the funniest, most embarrassing first hit ever. And he thinks it's a home run. Look at this. He thinks it's a home run. He thinks the ball went out. And a bit of embarrassment. But Manny continued to make mistakes like Wait, this. Wait, why wasn't it out? What, what happened? What happened? 
I'm not getting it. I'm not. Why can't it? Why wasn't it? It bounced out. Was it a foul ball? And an unbelievable. Pitch. Oh, because it bounced. It counts as a double. He once stole second base, was safe by a mile, but for some reason thought the ball was foul. So he went back to first base and was tagged out. In this play, he was the go-ahead run. All he had to do was tag up and score, but the runner behind him was thrown out before he scored because he decided to jog. On this play, Manny thought the ball was foul or called dead, so he just started walking back to his position. The ball wasn't foul or dead, but by the time he realized it, the runner had already scored an instant inside the park home run. And in the 1998 ALCS, he tried to rob a home run on a ball that landed behind him, likely costing his team several runs. Thinks it's a home run, and he runs by the ball. A Cleveland sports writer said that Manny Ramirez needed a, quote, brain transplant. And the but how was he one of the best players if he's fucking up this much? The psychologist even printed out a laminated piece of paper that reminded him to keep track of the score, the number of outs, and which base he should throw the ball to. After watching Manny stay in the box after watching ball four multiple times, his general manager asked him why. Manny responded by saying, I don't keep track of the balls. I don't keep track of the strikes either. I go up there looking for a ball I can hit. Isn't that what you're paying me to do? I said, that's right, buddy, carry on. It's <laughs> easy to say that these are examples of why Manny Ramirez is stupid. In reality, the carefree attitude Manny played with relieved him of a ton of mental pressure and likely contributed to him being one of the best hitters in baseball. Yeah, because he Cle wasn't stressed at all. He just didn't give a fuck. He would just go up and play baseball. Cleveland, he only had a OPS below 900 once. He made four all-star teams and won three silver sluggers, but didn't like keeping the trophies and gave at least one of them to the team psychologist. In 1999, he hit 165 RBIs, the most RBIs in a season since 1938. Manny Ramirez was one of the best hitters in baseball and also the strangest one. The video guy on the Indian says that Manny would regularly strip down to no clothes, then come into the video room and try to hug everybody. Manny also constantly forgot to deposit his game checks. He once left a $25,000 check in his locker that was found in the offseason. The Indians found $80,000 in checks in a suitcase he lost and he never even mentioned it. He once told a clubhouse attendant to wash his car and use the money in his glove box to pay for it. When he opened the glove box, he found $10,000 in cash. And despite making all of this money and just forgetting about it, he once genuinely asked a Indians beat writer if he could borrow 30 grand so he could buy a motorcycle. But he has 30 grand, he's fucking rich. Fortunately, the writer said no. Man, you know how much Reporters made, don't you? <laughs> His teammate Jose Mesa once demanded Manny's locker be moved because Manny just kept stealing things from his locker. Manny stole clothes from everyone on every team he was on. According to his sister, he even stole her clothes and wore them to high school. The team's It's so weird because he's acting like he he's still living like he has no money, but he ha he's a millionaire. Like, but he has the money and he's also not depositing money like he doesn't give a fuck about it. Clubhouse manager once confronted Manny because he was taking baths from the equipment room and they got in a huge fight, which ended with Manny slapping him in the face. In Boston, Manny's antics got even more extreme, at times even turning criminal. Manny became a Red Sox icon. He also got in brawls, fights with his own teammates, and made extremely strange headlines, which eventually led the Red Sox to do anything they could to get rid of. But before we get to that, a word from today's sponsor. Oh! It manager who introduced- Sorry, I gotta skip that. Mason for the three. Just got back from class. What is this video about? The strangest athlete in sports history. Lover for the three. Lynn for the sub. Gumbo for the three. EA Sports. Fat for the sub. Wendy for the three. Uh, watch This House Has People In It. Oh, that's the video you want me to watch. This house has people in it? What? What is it about? Well, we might watch it after this. It's on Adult Swim. 
All right, whatever. I want to finish this video, though. Used him to sushi, mixed his protein shakes well, and was able to make the pitching machines throw sliders. Manny saw him as a good luck charm, so when the Red Sox offered him a $160 million contract, Manny said he would only agree if the Red Sox also hire his favorite equipment manager. And the Red Sox said yes. Manny continued to be one of the best hitters in baseball, but also drove the Red Sox insane. He once missed media day for the All-Star game because according to him, his grandma died. He then told a different reporter it was because his grandma was sick. Turns out his grandma was still alive. The next year, while in a rehab assignment- Bro, lying about your grandma dying to miss a game is crazy. And he lost a $50,000 earring while sliding into third base. The grounds crew raked the entire infield between every inning, and after the game, he and the entire team patrolled the entire field to find it. They never did. Manny also apparently got his hair done during a game during this rehab assignment, and according to one writer, if he could stay in the minors the rest of his career and get paid the same, he would. Later in his career, Manny Ramirez literally requested to be traded to Pawtucket, the team's AAA affiliate. Manny's reputation- Isn't that, is that shit? What is AAA? Is that, that's worse than the minors, right? Isn't it? I know there's like tiers of how you can play. Triple A is worse than the minors. Boston was quickly crashing. No, it is the minors. It's a lower league than the majors. It's below major. What is it? Above minor though? It's in the minors. In a year, Manny reportedly begged the Red Isn't Sox. Isn't there something below the minors too? They have majors, minors, and then there's another team before the minors. Owner to trade him because of how. Oh, double A and then A. Okay much he hated Boston media. He missed a game against the Yankees because he was sick, then after that game was seen in a hotel bar with Yankees infielder Enrique Wilson. Manny even told a reporter his biggest dream was to play for the Yankees. A month wow. later, he was eliminated by the Yankees after a demoralizing series that involved him getting into a brawl. You talk about looking for a reason. Absolutely. Which led to Pedro Martinez throwing 72-year-old Don Zimmer. Oh my goodness. That's all. And two Yankees getting charged with assault for fighting a Red Sox grill. Yo, throwing a 72-year-old man? Now nah, that's crazy. A true member in the bullpen. Their ugly incident. Police responded immediately, as did bullpen staff for the Yankees. At this point, Manny wanted out, and the Red Sox did everything they could to get rid of him. They tried to trade him and even ended up putting him on waivers, meaning that any team could have him for free if they paid his well, cost. Able to shed the five years, 104 minutes. 104 re remaining on his eight-year, $160 million contract. He was getting paid that much? Contract. Despite being an all-star six years in a row and finishing sixth in MVP voting the year before, every single major league team passed on him. But just when things looked like they couldn't Even though he was that good, just because of his ex um, how he like performed outside of the fucking uh, games... <sighs> any worse, Manny and the Red Sox shocked the world. In 2004, he dominated the playoffs and led Boston to their first World Series in 85 years. He won World Series MVP, and all of a sudden, the strange antics Red Sox fans seemed to hate him for were now celebrated. Everybody's invited to my house to have free drinks! Everybody's invited to my house to have free drinks. Yo, what a bad idea. Yeah, everybody pull up. Everybody pull up. Everybody pull up. All million people right here. Pull up to the World Series. World Series house just won that motherfucker. And they started getting even crazier. Manny skipped the White House ceremony because according to him... If this video's boring, then leave the stream, bud. You don't, I, you don't gotta be here, Swerve. Hold up. I'll help you out there, man. Been following for 11 minutes, acting like he got an input in the fucking stream. But he said, this is his fucking chats. Watch the Island Boys. Watch the Island Boys. Who are you? Is this Joe guy popular? Watch the Island Boys. I'm gonna cream. Shit, bruh. Jeez. This video boring. Leave. He was at home meditating. Running mate Manny Ramirez isn't here. I, you know, I, I, I guess his grandmother died again. 
Just kidding. Man, man, I didn't mean it. And he kept on telling reporters that he took up meditation and began reading a ton of self-help books. But according to his wife, she's never seen him read a book in his life. One time during a mound visit, Manny Ramirez famously walked into the Green Monster so he could pee. There is no toilet in the Green Monster, but according to Manny, he quote, figured it out. He finished peeing. I'll just piss in the corner, bro. Is anybody really going to give a shit? Before he could get back to his position, the next pitch was already thrown. He knows it's not a pitching change, right? Because he's not back yet. Can he come back, please? Because at this it's moment, not a pitching change. Manny is not in left field. Oh, my goodness. This moment. Oh, my goodness. He had his second son and named him Manny Jr., which is normal, except Manny's first son is also named Manny Jr. Manny is one of the worst defensive outfielders in history, while simultaneously being ah. the most entertaining. Yo, named both of his kids after himself? outfielder in history. He once went into the field wearing sunglasses with headphones built into them so he could listen to music. Another time, he went into the outfield with a water bottle in his pocket. We that should not be allowed. You can't do that. He's out of uniform. What is this, a hike? Oh my, okay, yeah, this fucking jerk off of a commentator. What is this, a hike? Who the fuck are you? Why don't you get on the field, dumbass? Oh, I was out of uniform. But he has a water in his back pocket. Yeah, we're going to shit ourselves over that? It's a fucking water. I, if anything, it's going to hurt his performance. It's a water. Relax. On this play, he makes a catch, throws the ball to a fan, then realizes there were only two out. He once called off his shortstop who was camped under the ball, even though he wasn't even close to catching it. Not even close, and then he kicks it. The most famous error of Manny's career happened after Johnny Damon chased after a ball over his head, then tried to throw it into the infield. But for some reason, in a play never seen in MLB history, Manny intercepted his own teammate's throw from the outfield, causing an extra cutoff man for absolutely no reason. Oh my god, what did he think it wouldn't reach the base? Manny's best play occurred in Baltimore when he made a catch on the run and despite wasting time trying to high five a fan, was able to throw out the runner at first base. Don't let this play fool you. Manny Ramirez was a terrible fielder. He has the second worst defensive war in MLB history. What makes this impressive is that he still somehow ranks 81st all time in Somebody said, "What, Joe, what happened to your Instagram account? When I look it up, it says no users found. It's still there. Uh, also, you've been following for 20 seconds. What did you freak out and come to my Twitch stream to ask me about it? Squinty for the sub, Golden for the sub, 8 for the sub. Rusty for the 3. Uh, I already read that. Uh, oh, Mason. Uh, I already read that. Dude, I just reread all the donos. Oh, Vladis for the 3. Hey, cutie patootie, love from Estonia. It's horrible here. Where is Estonia? I'm not trying to sound like a dumbass, but where is Estonia? It's Europe, but where? Uh, and Dylan for the three. Uh, Soko's 1A, which is the lowest uh, in the minor league. Then once uh, you get better, it depends how good you are. You either go to double A or mediocre. Somebody go to triple A, which is the best in the minor leagues. Then you could go to a major after that. Lover for the five. Uh, made this scout 20 minutes ago to watch your streams. Dubs Raider for the three. Who's playing Phasma with you? Me, JoJo, and Zussi. I don't know who else. Big for the sub Mason for the three. Uh, lock back in here. Chat. All right. In war, because he was that dominant as a hitter, especially when it mattered. He played 111 playoff games and had an OPS above 900. But while doing it, Manny acted like he couldn't care less. In 2007, after being down 3-1 in the ALCS, Manny told a reporter, quote, Who cares? There's always next year. It's not like it's the end of the world or something. Wow. He then proceeded to hit 10 RBIs that series. The Red Sox came back and eventually won the World Series. If I die today, I die as a champion! At this point, Manny was a Red Sox icon. But this whole time, he was still constantly trying to get traded. And in 2008, he took this to a whole new level. In June, the Red Sox his friend. Red Sox found themselves in a brawl after James Shields drilled Coco Crisp. A few innings later, they started fighting themselves. Manny was what a fucking punch. What fucking punch was that? Looked like he was going to bitch slap him. themselves. Manny was a, a few innings later, they started fighting themselves. Bro went like this.
like a like, like you were gonna swat him with your fucking wrist. Selves. Manny was apparently upset with Kevin Euclid because he is known to throw temper tantrums after getting out. He confronted him and apparently ended up backhand chopping him in the head. A few weeks later, Manny did something much worse when he fought the team's traveling secretary. Manny reportedly asked for tickets for family for the upcoming game. The secretary told Manny it was impossible to get the tickets with such short notice, and Manny ended up shoving the 64-year-old man to the ground. By this time, Manny had already suggested the Red Sox trade him to over a dozen different teams, including the team's AAA affiliate. He was doing everything he could to make this happen. He once Why did he want to be off the team so bad? A game because he said he had a bad hamstring. When Terry Francona asked him which one it was, he pointed at both of them. He sat out in a game against the Mariners with a sore knee. The Red Sox sent him to the hospital, and an MRI showed no damage whatsoever. And according to rumors, he struck out on purpose against Mariano Rivera to let the Red Sox know if they didn't trade him, he wasn't going to try. Finally, the Red Sox listened and traded him to the Dodgers, which started a string of controversies that got a lot worse a lot more serious and even criminal. At first, Manny was a star in LA. He was adopted as their franchise hero, earned the nickname Manny Wood, and the team sold wigs that mimicked his hair. At age 36, he put up stats that were How long does the average baseball player play? Now it's a fucking third. I feel like 36 is old. I mean, it's baseball, so it's, it's not like fucking football where you gotta be like in your prime if you're a fucking running back. But like, how long do you play till if you're in your in a fucking major league team? Thirty five. Timmy for the sub down for the three. Absolutely mind boggling and turns out very unnatural. In 2009, he tested positive for a female fertility pill. Someone in Manny's team immediately told the media this positive test was caused by a drug prescribed for his erectile dysfunction, which was a complete lie, and Manny himself didn't even appeal. Turns out, he was getting a cocktail of PEDs made by a doctor without a license who would travel with him, and according to him, even sleep in the same room and read him bedtime stories. After his suspension, he again put up surprise. What? Why did he show up for a female fertility pill if it's fucking performance enhancing drugs? Is that really going to make you better at athletics? good numbers. He was traded to Chicago to help in their playoff push, but according to Ozzie Guillen, after he told the team he expects them to still play hard, even though they were eliminated, Manny told him, quote, I'm done. You, Manny, you only played two games. I said, no, you told me you had to play hard. I'm done. I can't. I, I, I'm done. That offseason, Manny was given one more chance. He signed with the Rays, and after having an abysmal start, he once again was suspended for steroids. Manny was the first player ever to test positive for PEDs twice. Instead of appealing or serving a suspension, and without even telling the Rays, he went home and retired. And just when things couldn't get any worse- Are you allowed to void a contract? Contract like that? He was charged with domestic abuse after allegedly striking his wife. Wow. These charges were eventually dropped after his wife stopped cooperating, and they are still together today. This was a massive wake up call for Manny, who has since been on a sort of redemption tour. Much of his public speaking is him admitting to his mistakes, talking about his dedication to God, and emphasizing how he is trying to become a better person. But Manny's bizarre antics that everybody loves him for have not stopped. Manny's quote-unquote retirement lasted less than a year, and since then, he's tried to play baseball on any team who's allowed him. He signed- But he's old as shit now. I mean, he's too old to play fucking baseball. You're like, you're in your 40s. Multiple contracts for basically nothing, because unlike pretty much every other major leaguer, Manny, for some reason, seems to love playing in the minors. He spent a short stint on the Athletics AAA team in 2012, he then signed with a team in the Dominican before leaving to play for the Rangers AAA team. After they release him, the Cubs signed him to be a minor league hitting instructor. But who the fuck is actually going to watch like double A games or triple A games? Like, like, are people really going to see minor league Rangers games? Like, are they selling tickets? Timmy for the sub. Or is it just like practice? Me, you would go. But promised he could also They're get fun. But where do you even watch them?
Mets and at bats. He became a player coach for the Iowa Cubs, playing in 24 games while giving hitting lessons. Manny then signed with a Japanese minor league team who promised to give him a Mercedes with a full-time driver. The team agreed that practices for him were optional, was given his own hotel suite on the road, and given- Practices are optional, he just has to show up? Brooks calling me, hold up. Hello, I'm streaming. Hello? I'm still streaming, what's up? What do you say? Would you want me to get you Chick Fil A? Yes. Okay. Um, I think I know your order, but I'm still texting you what you want. Okay. Bye. Love you. Love you. Bye. What do we want from Chick Fil A chat? Oh my god. Oh my god. No way. She's getting me Chick Fil A. Hold up. What the fuck do we want? Oh my god. What do we want? Spicy chicken sandwich. No pickles. No pickles, Chick-fil-A sauce, meal, large, with a cherry Coke. Then, plus an eight-count grilled nuggets. Holy shit. Dub. Cherry Coke? What are you questioning my Kate? What are you questioning my soda fucking choices? Cherry Coke's the best shit in the world. It's Ducky for the sub. W Brooke in the chat. Best girlfriend ever. Anyways. Uh she'll be on stream tomorrow when we do the advice stream. I'll be live at uh probably noon, uh twelve thirty one tomorrow. We'll be live a bit early. It'll be like an hour, hour and a half stream. It'll be a short stream with Brooke. I wasn't gonna stream tomorrow, but I want to do like a short advice stream with Brooke. I think it'll be fun to do just kind of just chatting. Answering my chat's questions, just talking. Um, Sunday, I'll be live at noon as well. We're going to do reacts then. Um, because I have, a, I have a grad party for my friends, so I got to go live early. And then Monday will be the Peppa Pig game, Fortnite, uh, at 2. Tuesday, I won't be live. Wednesday, I'll be FNAF Security Breach at 2, then Scary Reacts. Thursday, I'll be Reacts, and Friday, I'll be VR. Renew for the sub. All right, lock in here, chat. Unlimited sushi for the entire season. In a video posted by Wonton Don, he found Manny in Japan, who was a celebrity and literally using a random guy who never even played high school baseball as his hitting coach. We just went to the spa. Which turned out to be pretty smart because Manny won the league's MVP. In 2021, at 48 years old, he signed to play in Australia but was released for, quote, ongoing sensitive and confidential medical reasons, whatever that is. some random dude that's his friend that's just his fucking hitting coach. All right, we got to watch one of these videos. We'll save this for another day because people want me to watch this. We got one more. A man with 1,500 words left to live uh, struggles to keep his marriage and himself alive. Renee for the sub. Lock in here, chat. Short story or short film. <laughs> Stanley's problem isn't that he has 46 words left to live. It's too simple to realize we have other ways to communicate besides using our vocal cords. Yeah, fucking dumbass, dude. Literally, get a fucking iPhone. Text to speech. Beep, beep. When he said yes, then realize you have 50 words left to live. Beatitude. <laughs> Soliloquy. Poultry. 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 I don't even know how to fucking say that. He couldn't learn sign language? Bro, you don't even need that. Asher for the sub, little fatty for the sub. The license for the sub. Uh, all right, chat, we're going to call that there. That was a W fucking stream. I'm going to be posting on the YouTube right when I end. Uh, so if y'all want to go watch that, make sure to tune in. We had a great chat audience today, so W fucking uh, stream for that. Uh, mods pin the Discord link. Join the Discord. Send videos for me to react to. Games for me to play in the video suggestion tab. Game suggestion tab. Uh, if you have any videos you want me to react to, send them in the video suggestion tab. Any games you want me to play in the game suggestion tab. Uh, I would appreciate any recommendations, even if I don't use them. That's how I find a lot of the videos that I watch and the games that I play. Uh, I'll be live tomorrow at around 12.30 or 1. I'm going to be streaming with Brooke, doing an advice stream for chat. Uh, Brooke will probably handle the relationship advice and everything, but you can basically ask us for advice and uh, anything, and we're just going to kind of do a stream in regards to that because I think it'll be fun. Um, but it'll be a short stream. Sunday, I'll be live at noon as well. I'll be live early because uh, I have a friend's grad party. We're going to be doing reacts on Sunday. Uh, Monday, I'll be live at 2. We're going to be doing Peppa Pig's, uh, my friend Peppa Pig, that stupid-ass game, and then, um, probably Fortnite and Val. 
Uh, Tuesday, I won't be live. Wednesday, we're going to be doing uh, FNAF Security Breach and Scary Reacts. Thursday will be Reacts. And Friday will be VR games with myself, Zeusy, JoJo, and maybe I'm Dante. Uh, and then next Saturday will be a Minecraft tournament uh, with me and a bunch of other streamers. Tentacos for the three. Imagine using your last words to call somebody a dumbass. Uh, all right. Chat. We're going to call that there. That was a W stream. Once again, thank you for everybody that gave subs, donated uh, bits, followed, and just watched in general. I appreciate all of y'all, and I hope to catch y'all in future streams. We are going to raid now. Who do we want to raid? Let's raid Keep Up Radio. Keep Up Radio is never live when I'm live. We're going to raid Keep Up Radio. All right. I will catch y'all later. Hope y'all had fun watching the stream. I had a fun time streaming, and I will see y'all tomorrow around 1230 or 1. I don't know for sure yet, but I'll catch y'all later. We're going to raid in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.